Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Hey Arizona, just because weed is legal now doesn't mean your criminal record is clear. You need to visit azexpunge.org today. The Reclaim Your Future campaign can expunge your record for free. Go to azexpunge.org now.
Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Not an It's live, the Dr. Great Dub Show, in your face, right here on YouTube, Twitch, Discord, and the home site, www.bereal.tv. I'm Dr. Great Dub. Hello. Um, I got a very special guest in the house, and we go out of order here, as you know we must. <laughs> uh, we go way back from Lollapalooza. I'm going to welcome my friend to the show, Melissa Alftomar. Um good to see you it's been very a very long time yeah when i seen you last um you were still playing with hole then mm -hmm. um but i think you were transitioning going with the pumpkins or something like that i mean Lollapalooza was like the beginning of hole the beginning of the the immersive rock hellscape that was my 90s which i i love and cherish but it was um yeah that was a pretty um epic era when we toured together and then at the in 99 2000 i moved on to the pumpkins for a moment and then i was free of the 90s we are going to talk about all this to my right mr <laughs> good light djc minus what up happy tuesday and the legendary psycho lazy salute all amigos and up at the treehouse, the treehouse crew, Bolton, Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. Yo, yo, we're doing good, B. We also got Trace up in here. Yes, Trace. sir. Yes, sir. Trace. Treehouse Trace. Fresh off the F1 track. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce Willis driving a <laughs> fast car. <laughs> Completing the legend table, the strong one, Steph Tone. Hi, everybody. How yes, we you? are high, everybody. <laughs> or about to get higher. Uh, I'll tell you what. Um, in those Lollapalooza days, when when we first met, I I gotta say those were some of the funniest shows that we played, just because it was so off the hook. Like the the diversity of the the bands playing, and just the vibe. Period. It was like a great time. Like Lollapalooza really had it locked. I think. Can I but, remind people of the lineup? Because not everybody was there. Yes, please it remind. It was so people. diverse and so so the. Hole and Sonic Youth, we were in the sort of the final slot. You were the ones who would like bring up the whole crowd. And then prior to you, it was Moby, Sinead O'Connor was there for a second, yep. um, uh, Pavement. It was like uh, so Beck. eclectic. Beck was, Beck was there, like playing mostly like, acoustic guitar, and he would do two sets a day and go on the side stage and do yeah. like. It was an amazing, that was like peak. Peak end of the 90s. That 95 bill, to me, said everything about what was the dream of the 90s was there. And uh, and then, you know, things got commercial and crazy, and then, blah, like, 99, it was all done. But that, yeah. I feel like, so lucky to have met you during that m magical moment where we were all original. Yeah. Nobody was alike. Yeah. Everybody got along in a weird, you know, even if you, not everybody got along, but the point is that we were acceptant yeah. of all the weird Everything yeah. was different. Everybody yeah, supported each other. each other. That was the yes. cool thing. We were all watching each other's sets I up know. there. It was beautiful. It was it was pretty cool. Um, w one of the things that that tripped me out though was there was one one uh, particular I can't remember what show it was, but I don't know if you saw this, but they were tearing up the sod. They did this f for several shows. They oh, tore yeah. up the sod in the the, the in, in the crowd area, you know, beyond the seats because we were playing a lot of sheds, amphitheaters, right? Yeah, amphitheaters, yeah. yeah. And they were tearing it up and like tossing it in the air. And if you were on some mushrooms or psychedelics, you were tripping balls off that. <laughs> but what happened one night was that they tore up the sod and it all started coming in on Beck. 
Uh, I don't know if you remember I don't that. Remember, thank you for reminding me because I need to dig up these memories. Okay. Yeah, they they pelted him okay. with the sod. Kind and what's cool. crazy what is that, like, he got over that. He kept playing. He kept yeah. the pro. He's an absurdist, too, and, so he's into that. And Yeah, and he just sort of <laughs> ate it up, played with it, and by the end, he won them over, and then, you know, not long after that tour, he becomes Beck. Yes, it's true. He was still, like, baby Beck then. He was baby Beck, yeah. But you guys were such a cool, like, the fact that I've always been able to say, I toured with Cypress Hill. Like, that wouldn't necessarily happen at this moment in, in my life. It, yeah. <laughs> but in general, I thought that that was such a special, I was always so proud of that, that that's how unique that tour was, that we would all be together and that you and I became friends. I remember we'd have days off and we'd go to, like, the mall, have, like, lunch. Yeah. Like, I made friends with Be Real. Yeah. Un, un, unlikely friend yeah. in the 90s Crazy. for me. Yeah. During the days, the last days of your long hair. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, I had hair then. Uh, yeah. yeah, I wasn't rocking the wig <laughs> as I might do these days, but yeah, I had hair back then. Um, yeah, it was just it was just a crazy, crazy run. I mean, because that was our second one, and you know what was the thing was Snoop was supposed to also be on this tour, wow. but he backed off at the last minute, and then it became you know the three that were anchoring the tour was mm -hmm. Sonic Youth Hole. In Cyprus, but Snoop would have been there too. But I don't know what happened. I don't know why it, he fell out. Wow. Was it that would trial? have been a great yeah. tour for him. Was it the trial he was going to? I don't through? know if it was the trial. Summer '95. It could have been, but I, I just think if he had gone on that tour, man, mm -hmm. he would have blew that Ooh. tour up. That would have been Back in the cool. summer of '95. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we were running wild back then. It was crazy. I mean. Some of the crowds were just unbridled, man. You don't really mm, see it like you, you did back then. Like, I mean, you get crazy crowds in Europe. You yes. know, that's for sure. You go there and you'll see that just like it's the 90s right now. I'm, well, I'm the sure festival you... culture was born there and it's still there. Still there, yeah. We had a moment with those traveling festivals, thanks to Perry Farrell and the whole the vision of Lollapalooza, but it just has never... Well, there was also... Um, of course, the Vans Warped Tour. That had it from a... But, like, now there are just... Yeah. There isn't any. That's I feel like the is. only ones that really have it are, like, the metal. Yes. Know, like but they're the not traveling stuff. festivals, but they have the right. cool-ass metal festivals, which I also adore. Yeah. You're right. That right. crowd has stayed... I, I mean, the... the the pacification of um, whatever's happened in this 21st century with people staying at home and not rocking out freaks me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah. me upset. <laughs> or, or people being too cool to rock out. Yeah, or not the, caring maybe about much. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the first year for, for Lila Palooza? I think it was 91. Yeah, 91. Yeah, wow. yeah. and it was amazing. that Who for, was yeah. on that bill? That was Nine Inch the... Nails, I think, was on the for Jane's Addiction, Nine Inch Nails, or it was that yeah. was the second one. But all the bills were great. We were on the small stage on that one when um, I believe it was Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Chili Peppers, right. Cube. Yeah. And. Uh, was Tribe on? Uh, That'd be cool. I don't think, I don't know if Tribe was on it. I also love that in the club days, like leading up to that, that I would see Sonic Youth in the same club that I would go see Ice Cube. That was seemed all normal and happening. And I mean, yeah. I know that it's just always important to remember how magically free that time was in music and how lucky we were as alternative weirdos getting to see everyone come up in these small clubs. I don't know if that club culture is still here. Is it in Los Angeles? Tell me. Is it here? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. What do you think, C? You uh, think it's still here? Yeah, I mean... In places. Yeah, in certain places. Pockets. Yeah, pockets of places. Yeah. But yeah, it's not as, uh, as you know... As diverse. robust. Yeah. Right. And I think the same scene is there, but there's just nobody electrifying it. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go, That's that all. part. Right. That's true. I mean, in those times, you had a number of bands just, like, coming up and, like, heating the scene up. Yeah. yeah. It, just, it just depends on, on, on what the, the artists are that's available, you know? Yeah. Some people come with it because they're, they're bringing energy, you know what I mean? And yep. then others, they're just... Happy they got a gig. I feel like <laughs> some artists are bringing like like low energy. Like I feel like some some artists these days just you know go through the motions of it. And I, being that I'm not from this city, you know, I grew, I grew up in Sacramento. You know, I feel like you know we had you know we got to ride on a wave 
you know, uh, from the nineties, you know what I mean? That was, that's the time we come from. So that, you know, you know, all that, all that saying, we, we didn't do any Lollapaloozas back then, but we did see all those bands come through town, pl- play on some gigs, you know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. it was all part of the, the, you know, what we were, com- you know, referring to as the Sacramento scene back then, you know? Which I remember from playing Sacramento was real deal, even into the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I blame phones and corporate record companies. <laughs> I blame technology, oh. digital. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but I, to, yeah. I mean, I would agree. Like, some fans are too distracted at the show yeah. by their phones to like actually get into it the way they would have. And maybe some other creators ago. are too. I mean, is the the like the the desire we had in 1991 as individuals to get out there and splatter ourselves all over the world because there was no YouTube, no phone. It was just you and the world. True that. Get out there and be as loud as possible. Find your people. Get into cars, planes, trains, automobiles. You couldn't just, like, beam yourself to your house wherever you are. Like, we had to, like, work so hard to make an impact. That fire... If yeah. it's not there, how are you doing it? Like, I, I wouldn't know. I don't know that I'd be as motivated. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the problem is when people come and they're not just distracted on the phones to, like, catch the vibe. Mm. They're also giving away the meat and potatoes of the show. They're giving up the recipe of the show. Like, that's why a lot of comedians bag phones before you come see mm-hmm. them. You, when you buy that ticket, there's that little um, fine print says when you get there you got to bag your phone you, people don't always read it and they're upset about it but hmm. it's a way to protect the content and i feel like you know if you got a new cutting edge type of show like w- would you if you had a new show let's just say there was a new way to do a hip-hop show visually along with the sound would you guys or, or even steph tone or, or you melissa in in your hmm. bands would you want the phones to be bagged when they came in or would you care if they're not bad? I wouldn't care. Yeah, I don't care. Well, I'd like phones to not exist, so I guess I do A care. A perfect example was when we were up in Portland. Uh, BU hadn't got into town yet, but we went and saw Tool uh, one night. Yeah. And they have that policy where uh, no no videos at all, no cameras, oh, wow. yeah. and it's strictly enforced. And they make an announcement before that if you violate it, you'll be asked to leave. And wow. B, it's exactly why is what you're saying is their content, like they got some dope visuals, and uh, they they do some different different. I'll just I, call it that. And they don't want it. You know, they want to save their content for for that for that. I would know, imagine. Concert. I would imagine you two's doing that in their sphere gigs because oh. because we I haven't really seen anything. Like I have, and it horrified me. I'm a, I, I want to say this. Here we we are on YouTube right now. Like- I love watching YouTube. I, I spend every. I'm on YouTube every day. I'm that's my one of my addictions. I'm watching videos all the time. I don't watch TV. You know what I mean? Right. But isn't it cool? Like cat videos and things. Or all I watch all of them. All the I love. <laughs> I love animal videos. They're I amazing. love them too. The otter, the Japanese otter. Oh, the oh. otters. Oh <laughs> man. So good. That, what about Poppy? There's the little, a lot of the great ground dog. Oh, oh, I don't know. There's a lot oh, of great. Oh, Poppy's content. great. There's a lot of great oh, content, so but yeah. what I'm saying is, if you're spending like, if if right. you have a big ass budget on production, uh, and they're giving it away, well, you know, it could serve two purposes, right? It could make people hyped off of seeing it, or if they've seen like thousands of 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 different pieces of footage that's of this part, maybe the trick is blown. I don't know. I, like I, I was just saying, like I, I'm, I am grateful, for, like. Like I'm not. It doesn't bother me that people are are recording shows because I like watching other live shows and especially from people's phones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you actually right. catch it from that perspective. But and, can I uh, swing it back to creative fire and creative uniqueness? Is that yeah? In the '90s, when I was picking up a bass and you were starting your musical identity. We could walk to a record store and maybe get some secondhand cassettes or happen to catch a good live show yeah. and get inspired. That purity of inspiration that made you just have to figure it out for yourself, that's my big beef with all of this content being everywhere. I have no opinion about Tool and ripping cool vibes off of show footage, but I think that people are consuming so much content how do you find your own vibe and right. your own thing? That to me is the biggest complaint I have. Is that if you're a creator, I lo- I love that because I I'll tell you what I've been saying through because I'm, I'm terrible with my social media. I have an Instagram account, never on it. You know what I mean? You know I, I 
I want to do my own YouTube channel. Haven't done it yet. You know what I mean? Like I like like, I'm, like I fully just like procrastinate all the time with these things, you know. And and, and like I'm because I'm always being told you got to have that content. You got to have that content. I'm like, but I'm like, we already lived the whole life where we didn't. There was no such. Our life was content. Like I, we already Absolutely. done did that. Yep. Exactly. Like, like we got we got where where we were because we actually went out and, and played the shows. Like the the fire was to go play the shows, the gigs, wherever you know what I mean. We, and win people over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were gonna go there. You're gonna be like, "Yo, check this out." I know you never heard of it, or maybe you heard something you might not like. Check this out. Boom. You know, no one knows how to set their own tone these days. Is is mm -hmm. what it is. Is that like you know you follow trends? Well, people follow new artists follow trends because. You know, no one wants to take a chance on the art or themselves. Like, and and if you're on one of these labels, it's like you got to go well, all in. Well, you should do like little so and so did because he got a hit or she got a hit this way, and you got a lot of the same, you know, cookie cutter ass music because of that. Well, we saw that coming in. Like ninety five yeah. was the breaking point when all those labels had bought up every single. Thing that sounded like you, us, them. So they like bought everything up. Then every person thought, oh, I'll start a band that sounds just like either Nirvana or right. Cypress Hill. Or, and that's how it all got like decomposed into just a giant jumble of packaged um, cookie cutter th situations. And we all had to go back underground, basically. And then the underground became YouTube. So that's kind of cool. But I feel like that's that's where I blame the, the you know, the corporate consuming thing that happened to our cool original scene where no one sounded like anybody yeah and then everybody sounded like somebody and now here we are in the 21st century and everybody sounds like <laughs> well nirvana was a, happened nirvana was a musical tsunami and like yes. anyone that had that was playing an instrument and loving loud crazy music that there there was no avoiding that sound like that yeah. style yeah. There, you you were not gonna dodge it it was too infectious yeah agreed, agreed. And, and so many tried to sound like that I definitely did. I mean, they they killed they killed. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I was like, damn, that is amazing. They single-handedly oh, put a you know stomped out hair metal. But they, but that <laughs> that you know that's never, how powerful that was. Never mind, really, just like put the stamp on that on um, what that energy and that you know that whole that drive to to do it. You know, what I mean, that's what that was. That that was the record that it, yeah that stated that, that record still pops off. Let let me tell you. You know, yeah. let me give you an example, right? So for a time, we do this bit with the Cy in the Cypress Hill show where, you know, Send Dog and I split the crowd like we do today. But what was different about it then was that we had two songs that we would lean on. One was House Pain, Jump Around, and one was, uh, you know, the Nirvana joint, uh, Teen Spirit, whatever. Hmm. And or what was which one was it? whatever it was the big it was the big the big song right and uh, whenever we'd play that like how, when we play the house of pain song the, this whole side is jumping up and down going nuts right because it's a big hip-hop explosive impactful song right and i would usually take that song and send dog would take the nirvana joint when the nirvana joint would drop pain. the whole place even this side would mm -hmm. join in with this side it was just nuts that's explosive and these are like supposedly just hip-hop fans you know what i mean it, but that's how open people were to different styles of music if it was good and undeniable like yeah. people got down with it no matter what you listen to i knew a lot of hip-hop heads that loved nirvana absolutely you know a lot of very similar energy yeah very similar a lot of hip-hop heads uh into guns and roses too and that type of thing yep. that i found mm -hmm. as well yeah yeah there was a there was certain groups you know in the hip-hop scene you know just as you were coming up and checking out all these cool new hip-hop albums and singles and stuff you know you had no choice but to pay attention to the rock that came out because once it hit and you were like yo who's that like mm -hmm. like uh trey said with guns and roses welcome to the jungle and Nirvana smell like Teen Spirit, and then come as you are, right back to back. Everyone was like, "Oh, okay, we got, it. yeah, we need to check this yeah, out." Those but were, if you're a music those were bangers, fan, those were bangers for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're a music fan, though, you're not. I mean, you're listening to genre. You're sure. you're taking it all in. You're like a sponge when it comes to music. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, you know, we talked about it before. Like you, 
I'm going to say everyone loves music except for those people that are like, I hate music. It's like, what's wrong with <laughs> I that? I hate music. <laughs> Man. Yeah. God damn it, I hate it. I don't want to know you. What's wrong? Yeah, we can't be friends. <laughs> I hate music. I hate it. I've, I've never I've never come across someone that hates music. I, I've, I've come across saying. people that hate genres of music or hate a right. song or a, or a particular artist, but music in general. You got to be a <laughs> you ain't yeah. human. miserable. You dead inside. Miserable son of a bitch to yeah. not like you're a music. Special. You're yeah. a special kind you're of a guy. You're a special yeah. person. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I always said, like, what would a, the world be without music, right? Like, mm -hmm. a lot of pissed off people. Just angry. Angry. angry as hell. Yeah. yeah. Angry, some sad, not, not knowing what to do with life. Because sometimes music helps people through that, man. I mean, yeah. it saves lives. Saves yeah. lives. <laughs> Human population would diminish greatly. Yeah. A lot of things would happen, man. Yeah. Negative. <laughs> you know, there's a song that can pump you up to do all the best of things. Or it can also feel you feel with you when you know sadness yeah. or just like having a trying time. There's right. those songs that are there for you, and uh, that's the beautiful thing about music is that it can really help you in any situation oh, if you let so it. Hey, it, it. Listen, as an artist, you know, and a fan of it, it saved my life. I'll tell you that mm -hmm. right. That's now. right. My yeah. my enthusiasm for music uh, outweighed my my love for the streets it does that for everyone who loves <laughs> mm -hmm. music that's mm -hmm. what makes it so amazing exactly. his, his enthusiasm for the streets i like to call it well hey i was caught up i, I tell you i was caught up and you know like you hear it from some artists and some you know lie on their their shit because you know they want to validate some sort of street life they never lived but like <laughs> i actually lived it you, you had know? that street itis and, and you know <laughs> Now, as as some of you guys know, as Cypress Hill fans, I was I was a gangbanger, and there's only a couple ways out of that. And fortunately, I, I I was still enthusiastic and had a love for music in a different way, not just like you know as a fan of it, but to like create it. But I was lost from it until these guys came and said, "Hey, we're working on this guy's album. Why don't you come help us?" And you know they didn't need my help. You know, they already had it going and they could have just let me, you know, do what I was doing. But the three guys and the music itself, that's it saved my life. And I know a lot of people have that story within hip hop for sure. You know, in other genres of music, there's no doubt about it. It saves lives. Yep. Those of us that listen to it for inspiration, and those of us that it took out of a horrible situation and gave us a new path. And the fact that it just keeps giving and giving and giving and someone gets to discover Cypress Hill tomorrow and they get to have a whole life with it. That is the, I mean, it's a universal language and the best thing, my favorite form of expression on the planet. And I do think it, I love films, I love books, I like a lot of stuff, but music, music. has some omnipresent power that holds people and it takes you out of the here, the now, the play. It's another dimension it's very psychedelic on every level, and I'm not touching that smoke, but I will tell you that <laughs> psychedelics are my go-to favorite place to be, and that place is the same as music to me, where there is no beginning, no end. It's just another sphere where you can hover above this whatever earthly thing that I'm doing right now on a YouTube channel, right. but above it all is this, this ether plane, and I think music is the only one gateway to it where you just... It's timeless. There's no time space. Yeah. It's like a no time space continuum thing. And the fact that I have my own relationship to your band just alone in my head is the coolest, most sacred thing. You don't have to go to a movie theater for it. You can yeah. just be in a park. You can be in your bedroom. You can do whatever you want at any age, any day. Yeah. The best. And it's and and the stuff that that we create now, you know, will survive throughout time. It, exactly. It it hasn't even achieved the status of a Beethoven yet, uh, or you know. Yeah, I mean, think about that. Yeah, pop, it it pop will. Couple, you know, give yeah. it give it four or five centuries from now. You know, what I mean, people will still put on what we're listening to now. Because Boston, more than a feeling, is going to be crushing <laughs> True it. That. Out there. <laughs> True that. True that. It was crushed in the 80s. It's crushing right now. Yeah, yeah. It's 500 years from now. Yeah. They're going to turn that song up when it comes on. Exactly. You know yeah. what's crushing it right now from the 80s that I went to see live two weeks ago is Depeche Mode. Depeche, Depeche, Mode. Depeche Mode live. Yeah. Is better. I I got. I felt we're like gonna go see him next month. They won you over even Where? more. Aren't they in they're, Europe next month? No, they're here. Aren't they're they? With, are they out with the Pet Shop Boys? I think they're just on there. No, they have yeah. these cool young, like 
new bands opening up for them across the country. But the mm. show is so good. And I like Depeche Mode in the 80s, but it sounds better than ever. And it's also the life story thing. That's you my have, favorite that's band. That's dope. <sighs> yeah. Is it? Depeche Mode. I mean, it's, uh, it, I feel so grateful that now at 50, I get a whole new wave of, I love Depeche Mode more than I ever, <laughs> and I liked them before. Now I want to go like fly, just follow them around they're, and see them play every night. The way the way their layers and oh, the timing exactly. is it's just the amazing. tempos, yeah. How and they were so ahead of their and their, their voices, Mike. The and when you melodies. think about it, and when you think about it, they really never stopped playing, so they just exactly. got tighter and tighter, yep. better and and the sur they survived death, drugs, pain, all of it. Like you, you <laughs> watch them on the thing, and you. You're just crying just for the brotherhood of the band. Like that alone, I I wrote a, like a fan letter at this age to the management of just, you must tell this band that I now understand more than ever. And I, it actually got me really confused about the 90s. I got like really like a, emotional while watching the show. Of, like, did the 90s music stand that hard? And, and where are we now? Like there's a bunch of reunions I know, but I have like a twisted you know hole has a legacy in, I say often, the gutter of YouTube. And I don't mean offense to the band I was in yeah but there's a lot of lost opportunity True in the that. band I was in and I look at Depeche Mode and I see that arc of that many decades and I feel upset about the bands that I was in <laughs> or other bands that could have been just keep giving because you yeah. keep showing up and then your fans love you more than ever rooting for you more than ever anyway it made me very emotional you can't but disappear you but you're talking no, about the 90s and you're talking about Tepesh Mode and I'm just telling you there was no greater time than the 90s for Depeche Mode that's like literally when their Exa most those iconic albums. records were coming out and i think that they were actually feeling overlooked by the nirvanas and the sonic youths and the everything and yep, i, I yep. now realize that's why i got all confused while watching i'm like oh my god i didn't even appreciate them enough at the time we, they were better than ever then we were working on our second record uh it's called round the fur uh in 96 and uh they had just put out the ultra record and i literally oh, good. the whole time we were in seattle for like almost three months i put it on on repeat and it literally never stopped it yeah. played 24 7 it was that like was the, the inspiration it was literally the soundtrack that just stayed on the entire time like i love that record i've been doing that lately and that's again back to you can go back to this stuff at any point in your life and it can just carry you for days weeks years yep. <laughs> into the better place yeah, yeah no doubt yeah. Um, yeah let me ask you guys this as as artists what song did you absolutely hate it as you got older Hmm. You began to like it or love it, even. It's a hard question, yeah. Bring it. I feel like that. Um, definitely not Billy Joel. Definitely no Billy Joel. Do I love now? <laughs> but um, no, the uh, you know she got out in the the, the the one the journey song, not. Uh, the one that everybody don't oh, stop, don't, oh, stop yeah, believing. Don't stop I feel believing. like that is such an amazing song that it took me to be an adult to realize how incredible that song was. Maybe everybody loved it when they were young, but I did not. Right at all. How about you, Steph Tone? What you got? I don't know. Bring it. I mean, songs that I hate still. I, they're still there. <laughs> 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 I'm still like, no, no, <laughs> not one. There's Can not one, one that, that, that flipped you. You know. um, there was a song, uh, the was it Skyrockets in Flight? Uh, is that the name of it? Yeah. Afternoon, <laughs> yeah, yeah. afternoon delight. Oh. Yeah. But okay. that song, whatever that. That, that flipped you. Okay. Well, that, fair enough. No, that's so. Let's. So I was a kid. This, that <laughs> song was playing, and that was when um, this one girl landed a, a, my first French kiss on me out of nowhere, <laughs> and I was tripping on it. You know, she was, you know, she was. She had me by a few years, and I was just like, "What the was that?" But that song was playing. That song was playing. That song was playing, and embedded in your head forever. And uh, you know, because you know, the I was not in into the know of how what an awesome experience I was having was. I, you know, I had walked away with some negativity that day, and that song was related to that negativity in my mind. And whenever I would hear it, I was just like, Ugh. "How about you, Trace?" But I can I can hear that song now and go, you know what? I guess that wasn't that bad. Was All right. It? All right. This is gonna sound really weird. It's not, and it's also not that I love it, but I can stomach it now. Like, I could never like 
you go to a ball game and they play uh, Neil Diamond. You know what I mean? Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, now I get it. It's cute and it's funny and all that. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. But like Neil Diamond, that kind of crap, probably. How about you, Liz? You don't sing along with uh, Neil Diamond when everyone starts singing along? Absolutely not. No, absolutely no sweet Carolines not. for me, bro. <laughs> 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 yeah. How about you, Les? You got one? Uh, yeah, I can't really think of nothing right now. No. How about you, uh, C? A song that I, I think uh, I think we talked about it before. A song that I couldn't I couldn't stand back in the days, but as a DJ I had to play it. But then recently, like listened to it, and I was like, damn. It's like, oh, no. oh. <laughs> Chubba Wamba always don't do it. Uh, no, when I listened to the lyrics, I was like, you know, they're not that bad. And I would, I would, that's Ice Ice Baby Vanilla Ice. Oh. How bizarre. Weirdly, How bizarre. not bad. I agree. Not bad. Weird. Yeah. For, you know, because back, yeah. but back then, you know, I was so into like, you know, I was into Public Enemy. I was into NWA. Yeah, I was into Big Daddy Kane. And like, yeah. so, you know, here, it just sounded so sing songy and, you know, just like so kind of pop and silly, you know? Yeah. So I was like, whatever, dude. And then uh, now, and I, you know, and I've heard it like other DJ friends played at parties or just been at somewhere at the grocery store and you hear it, you're just like, damn. He wasn't really that you bad. Know, I feel like he's <laughs> yeah. not. You know what I mean? Like, like true. Yeah. Anyway. it's true. I mean, yeah. the other day I, I was DJing vinyl, and back in the days I would never play this record, but I played "Stop mm. Hammer Time." Ah, oh, see, you know, read my mind. Right I would have never played that back yeah. in the days, but yeah. today it's times. Yeah, mm. for me oh, it was yeah. "Bananarama." It's a oh, cruel which summer. one? It's a cruel oh, summer. Cruel. Yeah. I love that song. I hated it back in the day. The now I could some, you know. Now I get down with Banana Rama. That's, that's, that's the jam. More man. open. That's. The, it is the jam. I realize. I didn't. I didn't know it back when it came out. I was so hip hop. Um, yeah. that like I shut out all the the music I had listened to beforehand, mm. which because I grew up off a bunch of different. Uh, genres of music but when hip-hop came I felt it was so ours that I could not listen to anything else and yeah. you know it wasn't till we get on Lollapalooza and we start experiencing all the different music again and we're like oh man we've been tripping hold up and we start mm-hmm. opening back up again and that you know that got me listening to a lot of different things at that point that, that was the same for me, too. Like, from the yeah. moment, even pre-Nevermind, people like me who are coming up in the underground scenes, all that mattered was those unknown bands on Sub Pop and Touch and Go, and I tuned everything. That's why Depeche Mode got no love for me once the 90s hit. And then I'd say it was around that same time, yeah. too, that I, for me, I remember actually turning to, like, 1950s, like, Goldie. Like, I'd get those uh, at truck stops. It was a little, like... Um, uh, CDs of like best hits of 1952 best or Motown. There was a ton of like world truck of, stop CD racks. Yes. Are great. And yeah. I, then I actually, but I feel like I was so immersed for five years, which is what everyone kind of has to do when you become, when you're finding your essence, which is why I'm not into everyone just listening to everything all the time. Find your essence on, in a cocoon. And then once you've established it and you know exactly what your identity, who you are, then you can go out and start like exploring. But there is a, like a, it's almost a protective force field where you just want to be you and only you and nobody else can influence. Yeah. And then, and I think it's probably an age thing too, that early mid twenties thing where you're cultivating so that by the time you're standing on your own two feet before 30, no one can tell you who you are because you know who you are and yeah. you don't get influenced. You should know, you should know by then. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. That's so why, that's why we always say, try to tell me. <laughs> what you trying try to tell, tell me? Try to tell uh, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, teach me that. Can't tell me that. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing. Um <laughs> Yeah. Um I'll say this, you know, like when I did when we did the first Lollapalooza, you, uh, previously to to hip hop, I was like a metal head. I liked a lot of different music, but primarily I listened to rock and metal. And when we did that first Lollapalooza uh on the second stage, um and we saw sound, we were up in the grass area, and we were on mushrooms because mm-hmm. we used to take mushrooms all through those tours. So fun. And we watched Soundgarden, and man, wow. the 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 yeah. mosh pit that was popping off Crazy. for for uh, Soundgarden was ridiculous. It was like mm-hmm. a whirlwind or or a, a whirlpool. It was just nuts, and we were just 
taking that in and it got me back into listening to to harder music to to metal and and rock again i was like jesus christ pose do you remember how jesus amazing christ that pose. Yeah. riff is Ah, makes me yeah, the whole the, so the whole album Bad Motor Finger was yes. cool. like one of the dopest albums. Do you think B that some of those earlier concerts like that kind of uh, were some of the inspiration with Cypress with its rock sound? Absolutely. That you saw that and said this is the direction we want to take this. Absolutely. I mean, on top of the fact that you know Mugs and and Send Dog at the time before and this is before Bobo. I mean, you know what we were listening to was very similar. We all grew up to to funk, punk, rock, soul. Um, the only difference of, with mine was that I grew up with, well, Send Dog and I had some, you know, Caribbean, Latin type of flavor popping off through the house because, because of our parents and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we were all into that. So it just, it seemed like something like we could do, we should do and wanted to do, and that's it. You know, yeah, that was definitely influential on us. Like being able to rock with you guys mm -hmm. and a Sonic Youth, like as a hip hop band, that was everything to us because you didn't yep. really see hip hop groups um, in those in those particular festival fields. You know, it, you either playing a hip hop club or or a room of some sort, but there wasn't so much hip hop on festivals yet. Right. Like I know Public Enemy and the Beastie Boys were definitely hitting it, and uh, a few others, probably De La Soul and, and mm -hmm. you know, some of them definitely run DMC, but not like what what you saw in Lollapalooza. Like Cube was probably the first, I think, that they used as a as a hip hop artist on the first or second Lollapalooza. And he killed it. I mean, he was in there with <laughs> he was in there with Soundgarden and the Chili Peppers, mm -hmm. sharing that stage with them, holding his. Yeah. Yep. So definitely. it just went to show you how the music complemented each other, man. But yeah, it definitely, you know, us seeing that it works like that, yeah, that definitely was an influence. Like maybe we should try and do some different, something different. That's I know, I want harder. more of that. I feel like people are, even though it's freer now and there's less uh, limitations in the way that you categorize, because music is everywhere all the time for anyone. But I do feel like there was like a, a miss spot between the super heavy rock and the super heavy rap hip hop, I feel like there could be a more of a relationship now. Like I feel like the both audiences are being deprived of each other right yeah. now. But I don't I mean I'm not on tour with either of those worlds, but I do feel like it's a natural crossover that kind of ebb and flows and as long as they don't miss the other. <laughs> How long has it been since you've been on tour? Because I mean your your yeah. your palette is I mean, your schedule is busy. I mean, photographer uh, producer oh, like multimedia lady but really what happened is i got pregnant at 40 and i decided a mother is not going to go on tour so i right. toured i like when i met you in my early 20s i toured with hole in the pumpkins and i can't put out a few solo records in the 2000s and then uh, just over 10 years ago i decided i'm either having a child or i'm not and this whole thing i often talk to men in bands like i didn't have a wife and i actually didn't want a wife I had, it doesn't mean that I didn't want to. I didn't want to stay at home husband either. I wanted to transform and know what it was like to be in a home and not on the road because I'd been on the road right. my entire adult life. Um, so I ended up doing this wild thing where I picked a small town in upstate New York. My my husband's from Manhattan. I'm from Montreal, and we picked this little forgotten town, America at its saddest, like just like those boom and bust towns, and bought a giant factory. And in 2010, we started a an art factory called Basilica Hudson that is a reclaimed 1880s industrial factory that brings pretty much the dream of the 90s, music festivals, film festivals, visual artists, dance. It's a multimedia art center. And I had I tricked myself of locking myself to one location. Mm. I'll bring the world that I love to me. So uh, as I was pregnant, we bought the building, and then I right away went into being a mother slash curator, producer, event promoter, and just started a big art center that's like a bastion of alternative weirdo culture in New York because New York City was getting all like live nation and ridiculous and you couldn't like, so we are like 50%, most of our audience comes from New York City to see avant-garde weird stuff. Right. So that's that started in 2010 and that's when I got into, I was always, a, like when we met, I was a photographer. I was in art school when I joined a rock band and I loved rock music, but I always felt like I abandoned all these other parts of me. Right. 
So what I did when I became a mother was reclaim all my other parts and start like a multidisciplinary art center so I could love all art all the time, but music is still my favorite. <laughs> and I'm not on tour and it breaks my heart. Like it does, I'm, I feel physically wrong not playing not bass playing. and not being in a rock band. Do you still play at home? So I'm an all or nothing type. No, I, 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 I ju- no, I am a like, I don't know how to play music if I am not playing music full force all the time so to the, be on the road, to make a record, to do the thing. I don't know how to do it. So the last time you held your bass was what year? Well, I technically retired in 2011, and then I did this. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, promote something. This week, Paramount Plus, Getty Lee from Rush, has a new TV series called Bass Players Are Humans 2. <laughs> oh, that's great. And nice. they got in touch with me last year to be the only – female on the series so getty lee from rush goes and visits um bass players in their hometown and proves that bass players do a lot of other things what the four string (laughs) 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 and uh so i got a call from these producers saying so getty lee wants to come hang out with you for the week wants to see what you're up to see your art center meet your family show them what you've been doing since you've been off the road and then the episode concludes with a bass jam the two of you and i said i don't play bass anymore currently i don't but if getty lee from rush is going to ask me to do a bass jam off with him in my home i said of course and we had this incredible hour long the inner artist came out i I mean getty lee he plays bass with his feet come on (laughs) He does. As mm-hmm. how, how did it yeah. feel to be on his radar like that? Oh well, see, see, we have we share a special thing, which is Canadian bass player. So he's Canadian. Ah, yes. Canadian bass players. There's not many of us, and Canadians are already the most loyal. Like <laughs> gravitate towards to hug strangers. You're Canadian. So the fact that I'm Canadian and bass player, it was like meeting a family member. Yeah, <laughs> so <Family. laughs> so loving. Extended family. Yes. No, he he's the best, and he put out his memoir this week. So I saw him a couple weeks ago. Uh, he actually is going to be here in L.A. this week doing um, his big memoir, uh, The Story of a Bass Player. I'm very, you know, there's only so many singer bass players. that. Ex- you know, I went on from being a bass player in people's rock bands to being a solo artist. It's a singer bass player. And there's like this many in rock music of singer yeah. bass players. So I have a ben special. Lizzie. And, exactly, and, and played lineup. keys. And played keys. Yeah, that's additional. I mean, he did a lot. Additional brilliance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what we I went to see Rush um, down here at what was L.A. Live once upon a time. Mm. Now it's the Novo, is it? Or is it the or is it the YouTube or the YouTube? There, yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for where his base cabinets would be, where the ovens. Oh, bridges or like. Yeah. The, no, they were the they. He was roasting the, the chickens. Rotisserie oh, chickens. Oh yeah. Rotisserie yeah. chickens. Oh, yeah. And then sometimes. Weren't you at that show? We were at that show. Right. They had that, and then they have the laundry up there too. The washer, yeah, the and laundry. Dryer. Yeah, <laughs> he told that story at his memoir um, reading. Someone asked about the kitchen appliances That's in, the in lieu of, and he said he was making. He was basically an inside joke. There's a lot of comedy in that yeah. band. I now understand yeah. Oh, yeah. that I've gotten more familiar with them, but that the guitar player had such a giant wall of sound and Getty had gotten his sound down to just like the size of a toaster. Yeah. He said, okay, well then I'll just bring uh, appliances on stage to, uh, and he'd work with the light show to make it all, <laughs> you know, so weird, yeah. Yeah. weird yeah, it's hilarious. Appliances. They got a great sense of humor. I love their they commercials do. for their beer. Yeah. I they're, mean, they're I mean, hilarious. Humor in Canada goes hand in hand. I hope you all know that. Yeah, Be yeah. Real is an honorary <laughs> Canadian B. Weren't you up there in Calgary? You got your cowboy hat and they made you like an honorary Canadian. <laughs> at, a the stamp, at the Stampede. Really? At the Stampede. Yeah, B he, went out on he's, stage. He's overselling it, but yeah. They, had they his gave cowboy, me a cowboy hat, hat on, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, bang bang! There, see, there it's, there it is. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> bang bang! Yes. Howdy, burner. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Yes. yes. <laughs> hey, hey guys. Did you know? In 1965, oh, Bjork was born on this day. Happy Aww, birthday, Bjork! Happy birthday, Bjork! Happy birthday! birthday. Excellent. We partied with her several times, and she is a trip. 
Yes. She's Iceland pink. is a trip. Yeah. She, she embodies Iceland, yeah. which is magical. Yeah, she's a very cool, yeah. cool yeah. Yes, cool super people. cool artist. Unbelievable. Yeah. I okay. just heard the song Army of One the other day. <laughs> That's a good... Or is it Army of yeah. Me? Army of Me. Me, Such Army of Me, song. yeah. And oh my God, I was tripping how good it was. I hadn't... Yes. Hey, you know what's crazy is she don't get enough flowers for how powerful her voice... I know. And how Ooh. distinct it was. We were talking about distinction in mm-hmm. the, that time. And no one, she didn't sound like no one, and no one could really sound like her. It's true. Salute to Bjork. Yeah. Did you know? In 1948, on this day, Lonnie Jordan from the band War was born. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I read that all fucked up. You did a Colton. I did a Colton. Hey, man. From the band War oh. was born. Yes, Lonnie yeah, Jordan. Lonnie yeah. Jordan. He's a legend, man. He's the singer. Cisco yeah. Kid yes. was yeah. a friend of mine. Heartbeat. I'm going to make it real funky for you. I got to tell funky you, um, War puts up a show, and they will still pack it. They they, <laughs> they still sell the tickets, man. Oh, hell yeah. People you know, I, I, I'll be there, yeah. too. Yeah, me too. According to my mom, that's the first my first concert, War. That's your first concert? Were you in the belly? No, she was. It was my first concert out of out of the womb. I wonder if kids like remember that at all. Yes, of course they do. The womb or the yeah. Well, the, hearing the music while they were in the womb. I have a story about that. My daughter, who, as I was preparing for my retirement, I was on my second solo record, and I had by that time actually gotten up to like the full metal. Like I was one of the hardest rocking female. Built and so I'd be the only female on the act. I was at a metal festival in Toronto called Heavy T.O. I was six months pregnant. The headliners were Slayer, Zombie. Oh, my God. Um, it was uh, uh, Rob, Rob Halford was there. Mastodon, which were one of my favorites of all time. Oh, it was just heavy. like a best. I was the only female on the main stage. I had a big, giant belly with bass way below. Wow. Oh, man. And I dedicated... Um, the set to you know the two women on stage for all the women in the audience which were there weren't enough but you know there's yeah. always a, and um and then i went after my set and watched slayer from the side of the stage so loud wow my daughter was born three months later and we noticed that when she came out her hand was by her her ear and it's a, it's a beautiful birth story home birth one hour easiest thing I ever did, and I'm not kidding. I'd wow. been fearing my whole life, birth be hard. Mm. One day, if anyone was talking about women actually enjoying labor, it was amazing. I was just tapping the inner warrior. Daughter came out really quick, and her hand came out next to her, and then we noticed that she had this little, like, a little crunch on her ear, one ear, and we're like, oh, that's the where the hand was. We call it the sl- slayer ear. The slayer ear. Because later, when I went to tell the midwife, like, oh, you know, I was playing a concert. She said, by the way, I looked at you on YouTube, I thought you were going to play like a folk sh- concert. I didn't know what kind of music you played, but you went pregnant. Because I said, is there anything wrong with volume in the womb? Like, is it too loud? And then she told me later, actually, that is too loud. Like, that can be amplified in there. Right. I would not have told you you could do that if I knew what you were doing. And so I always visualize this beautiful little girl holding her slayer ear to the side of the stage. So I think you do hear it and know it. And she does yeah. know she saw Slayer when she was uh, in the womb. <laughs> I know you hear it. Uh, you know, like, yeah. they, 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 they do things with, um, with sounds with kids, like, and they play classical oh, music. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Because they say it helps develop yep. quicker, right? Yeah. But I wonder if they remember I any of it. I absolutely think so. Yeah. I also think we remember our past lives. So I definitely think you remember Pete's being in the room. Fragments of it. All that. Fragments of it. Fragments, for sure. Yeah. The depth that which our existence really is, is so beyond our awareness. Exactly. You know? And I mean, literally just because of your guys' physical relationship, all things that are you and that you think and feel are directly linked to her. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like when something's happening to you, it's going to, in real time, happen to her. And your parents and grandparents. I mean, it's yeah. in the DNA, the muscle yeah. memory yep. and whatever. You know, in each, I think it's a strange equation in that who knows, like you were born with more of your great-grandmother and you were born. But it's it's such a cool mishmash of ancient time in your mm-hmm. current life. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know? In 1970, Jimi Hendrix went to number one with Voodoo Chow oh. two weeks after his death. That's yeah. crazy. Posthumous. Posthumous. One of the baddest to ever do it. Ever. Um, I'll tell you what. Like, 
nobody could do his songs like him except for Stevie Ray Vaughan, rest oh, in yeah. peace. Uh-huh. I thought Stevie Ray Vaughan was probably the the one who maybe covered Hendrix songs the best. Mm. You know, his his style of playing was cool. But salute to, you know, Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Prince has done a couple of cool, like guitar, yeah. like Purple House. He turned Red House into Purple House. And he's done Voodoo Child. And he can mimic Hendrix like Prince great. is ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, man. Was that something they did a lot back then? Because like Hendrix, one of his biggest hits, The Watchtower, wasn't that a Dylan song originally? They've been doing this forever in music. Yeah. One artist might cover another, but change it, you know, so it's not exactly the same. Like, for instance, uh, Heard It Through the Grapevine. Yeah. It was originally written for Marvin Gaye, but um, Barry Gordy didn't want him to do it, so they gave it to Gladys Knight. It was of a more up-tempo version. When it became a hit there, Barry Gordy said, oh, well, maybe I'll let Marvin do it. And, you know, they slowed it down and made a different version of that same song. So it's been happening. I mean, Van Halen. They, you know, a lot of their hits were covers because, you know, David right. Lee Roth wanted to do covers. I mean, I like covers. Right. I like covers. Me Some, too. Sometimes keep the you warm. covers are even Same. better. Covers keep you warm. I Did lo- you know? I love some covers. In 1983, Michael Jackson's Thriller video was premiered in L.A. <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to figure that out, too. Dude, I remember being like a kid and my, and my mom had just got cable and so we were able to watch MTV and waiting for the moment that that came on MTV. And it was the first long form video, you know what I mean? And it was like all the magic that it was. Was that before or after he got burnt up? Before. before. So that was still the real Michael. That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to get at. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, had- that's the real Michael still right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the real Michael. <laughs> yeah. The full, the full mic. That's full, Rose yeah. full mic and, right there. Yeah, run, rows one and two. Rows three, not the real one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you know in 1995, Group Home dropped their first album, Living Proof, a hip-hop classic. Salute, smile. Oh, man. Yeah. Primo on the beats. Proof. Primo on the beats, yeah. yeah. DJ Premier. And did you know? No what? In 2000, on this day, Wu Tang Clan dropped their third album, The W. Wu Tang Clan not, ain't nothing. Uh, uh, not the hotel, the album. Yeah, that's got "Be Careful," "Click Clack," and uh, "Gravel Pit," I believe. Gravel Pit. Yeah. I, when I first seen that video, you know, I was like, I didn't know about the video neither. Yeah, yeah, but, but but you the know, the song now, was dope. Yeah, yeah, the song was dope. But yeah. now I watch the video and it's kind of cool. It's one of those things. Yeah, yeah as you you get older, you're like, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. I see it. Um, did you know? In 2004, Eminem went number one in the U.S. with Encore. Hi, my name is one of the best to ever do it. Yeah. Eminem. I mean, in my opinion, anyway. Absolutely. For nobody. I don't want to speak for no one but myself. I would like to hear M on some real raw. It would be dope to hear him on. Raw beats again. Like, he started off with the raw beats, you know, so... Yeah, yeah. It there's that song to take them back to the underground. You know, yeah, that would be dope to hear. He worked with the Beat Miners on. Uh, I would love. Yeah, that's yeah, what I like, want. like they did Beat Miners, Large Professor. Like Ooh, let's get beat cycle miners. less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Word up. We want to take the time to, uh, you know, tell you to smash that like if you haven't. Smash it. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Tell your friends. Share it out, and uh, crack the all notification bell so you can get down with uh, all the content we drop. And before we get into the next bit, Mota Lada is Blaze Mota's ready to drink cannabis infused michelada made with non-alcoholic Mexican lager, tomato, lime, and spices. No mix needed. 20 milligrams of THC per 16 ounce can, 50 milligrams of THC in the new chichelada. Yes, chich marine, the legendary one, uh, got his... um, he got his drink out there, man. Go support. Mm-hmm. Blaze Mota has a line of cannabis products celebrating the proud traditions of the Chicano culture that have shaped our great city of Los Angeles. Blaze Mota es hecho en Los Angeles for the world Mota. to enjoy. Can I drink this? Yes. Is, I want, is this something I take with <laughs> Absolutely. here? Absolutely. I, I was admiring it. Is, Anyhow. Is we'll, bring you a, we'll bring you a cold it. one. Yeah, let him bring you a cold one. It'll okay. be much better. It looks amazing. I didn't yes. know the backstory on this. So do you? So is your is your psychedelic of preference mushrooms? Mm-hmm, primarily, but I'll go in other directions. And do you All full right. do you full blown melt with mushrooms, or you like microdose? What's your which? Uh, 
I don't, I can, I'd happily microdose, but I don't need to. No, for me, it's the big gate. Like you go deep. You're going to the gateway. You every New Year's was my tradition, New Year's Eve. And you just, you open up the, the pathways. Portal. Exactly. You're going to the portal. portal. Give it to me. And, and so making a thing out of it. What's kind what of your dosage? Like an eighth, an eighth of mushrooms will do it or half well, eighth? Well, I, I can, like I'm, I'm. Like a gram, two, three. I don't need to do heroes. Yeah, heroes. no, no one needs to do that. I've done it, but I don't need to. I want to be able to do it a few times a year and be like super psyched. Um, but then I, I love a good mushroom chocolate. There's a couple very yes. good. Those mm-hmm. I can do more. Which one's your favorite? I don't know. There's a place from, oh, it's from Colorado. It's an amazing, beautiful packaging. I don't remember the name. I always get given them. There's <laughs> one called people. Hero that's really good. Okay. Your because that I, that I could do more like a, we go out tonight and I can hang out with it and love it. But how much, yeah. how much yeah. do you eat? Well, a, you know, a perfect cube, little, depending little cube. on, but I kind of have to trust the person who has given me this box. <laughs> trust, trusting the dosage <laughs> yeah. on the package exactly. is everything. It's Unlike important. Bobo. Unlike, Unlike Bobo. <laughs> Bobo's in Argentina right now, Bobo. otherwise he'd be here, yeah. Doing? Well, he, he's, uh, he's got a son out there, so he went to visit cool. his son. And, uh, you know, so he'll be, he co-host the show with us when he's when he's here he's probably watching right now so hello bobo bobo, bobo. on mushrooms is, yes on uh mushrooms. He, yeah he's the guy that you don't want to take advice of oh. dosage oh. from yeah <laughs> don't want to take bobo's advice because yeah, he will totally steer you wrong by if, if you ask him if they're medicated and he says no more than likely they are well more than likely they are i would say delicious by the way yeah. I like my drink. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Well, Mota Lava. Bloody Mary, Lava Bloody Caesar, Bloody Everything. It's yeah. my favorite drink. Yeah. All right. Bobo is what he likes to refer to as an extremist. He's an extremist. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, yeah, when it comes to psychedelics and all other mm-hmm. things. Yeah, it was extreme. Yeah. Very extreme. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, let's check this out real quick. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Ariana coming from Dr. Green Thumbs LAX. This week, we're actually featuring Alien Labs, and we got three new strains in. I have the Kryptonite, the Gemini, and the Planet Red. Uh, we also have a bunch of other really good brands and uh, deals. If you guys want to come check us out, ask the Bud Tenders. You'll find us at 5494 West Sentinella Avenue. Back to you guys at the studio. Thank you very much. Make sure you check out our Dr. Green Thumbs locations throughout California. We'll put the addresses up on the end of the show, but uh, go get the gas. We got it. Mm. And uh, now let's get into submissions. What? Submissions, submissions, submissions. Submissions, 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 submissions. Submissions. All right, we got a ton of submissions in today. We got Brie up here first, and she's showing off some honey garlic pork chops with some roasted asparagus. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What do you think Delicious. of that, B? That's nice. Bring it. That's nice. That's nice. Good portions, not too much. Hello. Potatoes look good. Yeah. So is that Probably a different plate, right, Steph Tone? You like that chop, son? I'm going to eat that whole plate happily. <laughs> But and yes, uh, a nice, clean white plate would have been plate of choice. Yeah. All right. Check Bree. Hello. Good job, Bree. We got Dean Jones. He's showing off some uh, teriyaki free range pork medallions. Melissa, this is where they torture okay. us. You know <laughs> what I mean? Thank you for telling me what's happening here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we got our fans that send in submissions to us, and they're always cooking it up. Wow. Yeah, because they know we're high right now. So this is, you know. Oh. Look at that rice. That's good. Oh, my oh, God. Serious. Okay. Jeez Louise. Now I'm really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Nice white plate. <laughs> <laughs> then we got uh, Michelle. She had her birthday dinner on Sunday night. She had some uh, rellenos. 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 Rai. Rai. Llenos. Enos. Rayenos. No. Rayenos. No, no, not Enos. Yenos. Rayenos. <laughs> no. Rayenos. <laughs> not Enos. Rayenos. <laughs> Rayenos. Rayenos. <laughs> Ryan Yos. Oh, my there God. There you go. Yeah, no, perfect. No, no, perfect. no, it's not. Don't lie to your cousin, all right? <laughs> Ray. Perfect. La, no. Rayenos. Yeah. Ray. <laughs> Rayenos. There, okay, there you go. That's a little bit more acceptable. Rayenos. <laughs> all right. I'll say Rayenos. 
All right. No, I can't roll the Mars. Not yet. <laughs> We've been trying to teach him, Melissa, but you know he's... <laughs> Melissa can roll the Rs. Well, I can do French. So you could I roll got, the Rs. I R. got Rs, yeah. yeah. But you, you might have to teach me other things. But yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got Smokestack saying he's getting in the holiday spirit, and he's finally pumped for some nerds candy canes. Wow. Okay. That's real stoner food. Get right your there. cavities on, baby. <laughs> Dude. Get your sugar on. Pop them cavities off. It's been forever. You guys candy cane fans or not? Nah. Uh, never. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Nah. The little ones. Those, those are good candy canes. Nah. I've never been a candy cane fan. Sorry. <laughs> They're cool. Those ones are. Mm. But I will steal one of those little mints, you know, those little red and white mints after yeah. you eat at a restaurant. I'll grab that. I mean, that's kind of the same thing, but not the candy cane so much. <laughs> Sitting there. Sucking on it. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. It would go with the shirt right there, Bruce. Hey, that's okay. Hey, man. Yippee Kaye. Yippee Kaye. Bring it. All right. And we got STL. He's saying, yo, shout to uh, Two Bears, One Cave. We got Tom representing Black Sunday in the back. Hey, there he goes. We got to oh, get him over so here, man. Yeah, man. It's long overdue. Bring it. Salute, Tom. We got Mur Eats. He's asking, be real for a little joint rating. Mm. Ooh. Okay, to the neck. All right. Um, yeah, above that neckline, there's a little bit of wrinklage there. It's it's a little squeezed up. Super. He got booed up right there and put the squeeze on it. And then there's a squeeze up top. Oh, my. Man, what do you use? Wrapping the, paper to make that? And then the squeeze on the other side <laughs> slightly. Damn, that is tower of a joint. It's not too bad in spite of the squeezes and the wrinkle, but, but I'm going to have to give that a six. Looks like the kind of paper that your steak would be wrapped in from the butcher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, pre it's, pre it's pretty straight. Is that parchment paper? Is that what that is? It looks or like parchment paper. It's just, you know, <laughs> this, this seems like you got a little loose around the neck over there. It is a nice looking joint. It is. I'm not, yes. not, not, not trying to be a hater. No, it smells great. I'm going to give it a six. Something going on down there on the tip, though. Like, yeah. We got crumbs in is there. Is there a huh? tip? A tip on it? Yeah, 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 there yeah there's a, a tip. tip. It wouldn't stand up oh, like God. that without oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then we got a uh, T. He's saying, "Yo, happy birthday to me!" And he's saying, "Now that we legalized, Ohio's mm. finally getting good concentrate." All right, hell yeah. yeah! Happy birthday and congratulations, Ohio! Yeah, that's what I like to see right there. Baller jar. Yeah. Smoke. Buffet of dabs. He's got uh, yeah a buffet. Options. Oh options. That's the way you do it when you got dabs, though. You know what I mean? Get you got, options. You got flavors on deck, and you just make you just go for it. It's a lot of love right there. All right. We got JK, and she's uh, saying, I drew this runt and layer cake, saying it's gassy. It looks pretty gassy. And she's all the way in Scotland. Oh. Ooh. Bring it. All right. Gasolina. Got some fire in Scotland. That's right. Excellent. It is excellent. Showing off some more of her growth. Wow. Nice. All right. right. Crazy. I would, be, go. I would be going crazy if this was growing in my house. Like, <laughs> what the? F Damn, that's good. And every day I wake up like. You could. <laughs> Looks good. Just don't put it outside. Yeah. You should get a little psycho less micro grow going. Bring it. Man, go back to that last picture. Look down there in that little bud on the left. And you see that little guy sticking out behind the leaf right there? See him? A little alien down there. He's like, you. Ah. In the shadow. Yeah, I see him. Ah, I see him. He's a peekaboo. No, no, no. Yeah. He's in the left bottom corner. <laughs> yeah, he's like, what's up? Oh, I see him. Hello. I mean, I, I'm waiting on Bolton Ken. can't see him, though. Bolton can't see him. Right, right. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Go back down. Go back down. Go back down. Right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's the alien <laughs> face. Peekaboo. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. I know, I'm that, saying, I, let's I, get I'm, high. I'm waiting, on, I'm waiting on Ken G. All right. He's supposed to be growing my things. Oh, there you go. There's a pterodactyl I saw earlier in the one. To the so. professionals. <laughs> All right, run it. We also got a JK, and she's showing off some UK cheese. Wow. Nice. Wow. All right. Mm. The trichomes are, like, popping on that. Ah, yeah. Nice to see uh, the smoke over in Europe turning into what it's, what it's developed in, in the last five years. Yeah, because there was a lot of boof. And <laughs> it's headed in the right direction. I'll say that. That's for sure. Excellent. That's like you said, though. You know, we're 
We're very lucky, though, for what was going on in Amsterdam because that kind of came mm -hmm. here, you know? True that. The Amsterdam experience was brought here. Mm -hmm. And we got Red Boy. He's growing some uh, Gorilla Glue, Girl Scouts. Gorilla Glue? Gorilla? <laughs> what? <laughs> gorilla Glue? Gorilla? gorilla? That, that Minnesota <laughs> accent, boy. Girl Scout <laughs> CBD and Tropicana Cookies. Say it again. Say it again. Gorilla, gorilla glue. All right. Gorilla. gorilla. Sit, once in a while, Melissa, he'll yeah. you know have a. <laughs> My accent will come out. His <laughs> accent will come out. Country, <laughs> country out. accent. A little Canadian like. You guys smoke on any CBD flower or not? not what a really. waste of time. Yeah. I mean, are you I mean, asking us? That's what he was growing. Uh, he had some uh, Girl uh, Scout CBD flower right here oh. in the middle. Oh. I would try it. Yeah. But I don't smoke it normally. No. I'm sure it'll really be like great. Yeah, would it, would it, it be good to, to mix it with like real weed? You could, yeah. You could, yeah. right? Get a little salad. Yeah. Salad, yeah. Salad. You're probably going to get more blown out doing that, that's for sure. Yeah, it's baby. possible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think so? Start bringing it closer to full spectrum like that, wouldn't, wouldn't you think? That it's, yeah. I mean, I, I guess so, yeah. Definitely you got no, the THC out. rich I didn't flour have, and some CBD flour. I hadn't no. thought about it till now. Yeah. Bring it. it might be a little more potent. Could be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we got Insane Harold saying he's watching the podcast and ripping it up. He's got the gas mask <laughs> wow. on. Gas face. Damn. That's commitment. Smoke. <laughs> rip it good. Let it rip. <laughs> ooh, -wee, ooh. <laughs> This is a real education for me, actually. I'm this, this show teaches. I, I have know? some questions, though. I do want to know <laughs> All right. about, about the volcano versus the smoking dragon. I want a little bit. I actually am a non weed tolerant person, right. truly. I totally love being around weed smokers, and I, I love and know many, but I have like a mental allergen to it. Right. And I once asked a doctor. Why is it that I could do acid or mushrooms and go to like visit my mother right now? But if I smoke a joint, it feels like the whole like an alien universe has like injected itself into my head. And said, well, some people just have more certain chemicals already in their brain. And then when you put it in, and I guess the psychedelic types of chemistry that gets a, is a very natural experience from my brain, whereas this is an outer, like an invasive species it gets right. into my brain. And it just makes like kind of lame anxiety. And I'm not an anxious person. I yeah. don't suffer from anxiety, paranoia. Your no, receptors like, are highly never. sensitive. Yeah. I'm totally cool. Like I know the world is burning and shit's do me, yeah. but I'm still not anxious about it. But I will smoke a bit of weed and all of a sudden I'm anxious about everything. Yeah. So I don't want to make you... But I want, I have had volcanoes work for me because I, for a while, was trying to train myself to smoke weed. Like, I got to be able to do this. Why is it so wrong for me when it works so well for so many people? And the volcano is the only one that kind of has not invaded my brain in ways. And can you tell me why you Pass it down. smoke the volcano? Pass it down. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy the volcano because... It, it affords me the opportunity to just kind of relax and take my time with it. Like, it's not getting bad. Like, you could never do that with a bong. You can never take your time on a bong. No. Hit. Okay. Uh, the, you know, I enjoy joints, you know. I mean, those are, those are definitely a, a mainstay as well. But this just seems to be cleaner. And, you know, uh, I get a, the, the elements that it's actually affecting in the plant are the elements that affect the thing that I register as feeling great, where, where it kind of affects your eyes, yeah. where you feel mm -hmm. like your eyes get that. <sighs> is it lighter maybe, or is that just also because there's I, without the smoke or I, carcinogenic I feel it like it's lighter? A, I feel like it's a little bit lighter. I think yeah. it's very deceptive yeah. because yeah. It, gives mm -hmm. you, it gives you the impression that you can go bag for bag for uh -huh. bag for well, bag, well, yep. and before is. you know it, boom, <laughs> you're what blown is, to it, bits. It's lighter on your lungs, for yeah. sure. Well, yeah. what I'm saying so it's is... it's less of a physical yeah, high, because yeah. that's when I definitely have felt like, get this thing out of me. Yeah, like, it feels yeah, like it's yeah. in my body in a way that I, it feels strange. Well, like, I want to, like, scrape it off. <laughs> well, you, what, what I'm saying is, like, if she were to take a hit of this joint, 
it would impact her immediately. Immediately, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, but if and if this she is slower? but if she was taking the hit of the bag, the, no. the bag is not as, as big one like one big hit like it's a draw immediate. from a joint. So if she yeah. were just to take a hit from the bag, it would be a significantly smaller oh, hit. Well, that's what it is. You would get high, but it wouldn't be as effective it's as the like, micro that's, dose that's, that's, of. That's a new record, right? The hits from the bag. Hits from the bag. <laughs> or if your Bolton hits from the bag. It's from big. the bag. Bet you. From the bag. The fire. You trying to hybrid it out? Bag. <laughs> bag. But is it? Do they make normal weed anymore? Is everything oh, yeah. crystallized and crazy? Normal no. weed is potent. No, yeah, I mean, there's, but there's, the there's non potent new stuff. I mean, maybe I'm just old school or something. Well, there's a combination. There's, okay. there's the low grade stuff that it, it doesn't have a lot of THC. Okay, that's which n- not really any of us do. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the stuff in the middle, <laughs> which is slightly more, you know, and and a lot of people do that because they don't want to have the anxiety. So. Mm-hmm. There is a mid-level okay. quality where you could smoke and it would be enjoyable. It just and it wouldn't like give you the crazy anxieties. But then there's that that top dollar premium herb that will absolutely give someone who doesn't normally smoke anxieties if they tried it for the first yeah, time. Yeah. If they took too big of a hit, it would happen to anyone. Mm-hmm. But now they produce all sorts of different, you know, kinds of cannabis, some high grade, some mid grade, some low grade. So it all depends on the experience you want. But it takes like if you go to the like let's just say a dispensary, you have to tell that to yeah. the bud tender so that they'll do you right and not just give something that's gonna blow you out and give you anxieties and give you a horrible experience. But if you have the tolerance yeah, you want that stuff that would blow your average person out. Okay, and then what about the consuming, the ingesting, like the eating of weed versus the smoking? Can you tell me? They're great. You have to it's just great. you just you already have the, your inner extremist in you already. You know what I mean? You you do it with just different substances. You yeah. need to uh, allow allow the weed to to give you that same opportunity. You know, you've you already have relinquished your self control. Mm-hmm. You know, you've. You've given you you've shown control that you're in charge enough that you can go out of being in charge. So it's the same thing with I've the weed. come and, here to get yeah. greenwashed. And, and here they're I both, am. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's two I different. like it. I truly do want to and, be a weed person. And it's two different kind of highs consuming it in smoke right. and consuming it in edible form. I recommend dabbing. Well, there's that well, too. Go to the dab is great. Well, dabs and edibles to me it R-S-O. knocks knocks me out. I'm R-S-O. going to sleep. R-S-O. Yeah. So if you want to go to sleep, well, it depends no. what edibles. <laughs> it depends what your experience, what you want it to be, and and at that point you have to be like at least disciplined enough to not overdo it. Yeah. Because any of it is cool if you don't overdo it. With us, we overdo it because our tolerance is crazy. So this <laughs> yeah, is just dude. what we normally do. But, um, yeah. With that being said. Which is more potent, a hot dab or the SHO or RSO? Which would hot be dab. more hot dab would hot dab. just devastate you that right away? Yeah. Like in, yeah. just kaboom. I mean, that's hands down. You're like right there. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, All of it will get you high, but the one that will put you out is the hot dab. The hot let dab. Me, let me ask you something. When, when was the last time you took a hit of a joint? Hmm. I mean, a few times a year. Oh yeah, okay. nice. You know, I just like I gotta be able to do this. What's wrong? And then it just is really dinky. What I think people think is like dirt weed. Yeah. I could do that. I'd be like, oh, that was fine. <laughs> you, ever, <laughs> you could find some good level, good mid level herb that's like good, but not too strong, and you would probably enjoy it. It's just yeah. that probably the people you know, like, are bringing some yeah, actually. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Good and I hear stuff. it all comes from California. Whenever I say, "What?" Well, they, that? yes, then, like, then California. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, what we got the, <laughs> we got the high grade weed out here. That's just okay. and bad. Melissa. Yeah. A good way to gauge it too is on a THC percentage, okay. and that's usually on the bag. You know, you don't want something into those high thirties. You know, forty percent. You, you need to stay in those like low twenties. You know, stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right there where. And then, and then in that market, right, there are some really, you know, really nice flavorful oh, yeah. uh, stuff, you Absolutely. know, some nice purples where you'll get some very, uh, like, perfumey, potpourri-ish flavors and grapes and it's, stuff it's like that. It's, it, what, it, what it boils down to is that, like, when you go into a shop, ask the bud tender. And if that bud 
tender don't know go to another one because okay. someone knows in there. So you mean I could go and say I aspire to be a chill, easy weed smoker, but I, yeah. I have I have no tolerance. You tell them you don't want to have anxieties. What's the what's what should I have right here that won't get me there? But tell me, is this a doing everything anytime? You're talking, you're walking, you're cleaning, you're sleeping. Yeah. Like, that just like a twenty four seven comfort. Like I and when I in my mind think like. Wouldn't it be great if I was into weed? In my mind, I'm like, so I could sit down and write a book, read a book. I could clean my house. Like, there's certain things in my mind that I know I would benefit yeah. from having Being that you have, have low tolerance, it would probably stay in your system for a while. You would feel the high for a while. You know, I don't know how long, but... Right, like I could utilize it. Like I need to do a thing, so I'm going to yeah, do this. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas for you, though, professionals, I'm just curious, is it a... Just all that it's not special occasions, yeah. clearly. It's hyper focused. You know. <laughs> now, so, look, when, when, so when it's time to work, and I could probably speak for anybody sitting here that okay. it, you know, we're hyper focused no matter how high we are. And I think that, that, you know, like smoking actually adds to that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we're all, st I'll stay on something because I'm extra high and I want to get it done. And it's like a challenge to me. Mm. Yeah. So it it never makes me to where like oh no nah, you know what Pff, I'm just gonna do this later never yeah. does that for me. Do yeah. you ever do a conscious no weed intake times? Yeah, yeah. to see and what does that time. do for yeah. you? I'm just curious. It's like, no different for me. Like makes I don't me I don't mad that I'm not doing it. I'm like <laughs> yeah. what am I doing? Like, it, like <laughs> for me, to give me some weed. I could go weeks and months okay. months without smoking. Yeah, for me, I don't lean on it for the creativity. Yeah. It just okay. it's just there. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not to, to me. It's not to be creative. I don't need it for that. If yeah. I need it for that, I'd be in trouble. Oof. Okay. Right. So for me, it's just this is something I do. Like I, some of the get high songs I've wrote, written throughout our career, I've been sober when I mm -hmm. when I wrote them. So it it was neither here or there. It's just a a thing that happens. Hey, yo, Dom, yeah. hit her with that Nate dog drop. I smoke weed every. <laughs> Every day. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> yeah. Right. I was, uh, was going to say, uh, Melissa, in your drink, there is 20 milligrams of THC yeah, in there, so worried. be careful. Like, oh, she can I read be? Bolton, yeah. no, unlike I, you. That was part of my, <laughs> I'm experimenting we were just with. We were just go. talking up here. We were like, I hope she knows there's actually no, no, weed I, in I, there. Yes, I okay. read the label. Yeah, she and read, I, I saw the advertisement. <laughs> she's seen Cheech. <laughs> she's seen Cheech drink. Yeah. She's not from Minnesota, Bolton. She could read. I think you could handle a six-pack before you would feel that high. That we would all be like, no, I man, think she, I am. I think lit. she might feel that just a little bit. No, but I'm just saying, like, where you're like, you chug it. Oh, man. Because Send Dog drinks one of those and he fills it. Mm hmm. But it don't get you lit. I'm no, just, no, no, it no. It don't get you I'm lit. I'm saying you, nice you got to drink right. about a six pack before you feel like you had mm. the, the, the hash hole joint. But yeah. what's the paranoid element of the drug? The anxiety, like. It's it, when or, you do too much. Like, if okay. you're smoking on it's an not indica. A okay. When you're smoking on an indica. If you know, because that's a lot of THC in in the contents of mm -hmm. uh, indica flower, um, that's when you might get anxieties when you you're not your tolerance level ain't ready for that. That right. thing, that yeah. thing you fear is where E Zone and Bobo are thriving. They're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, man, it's, for it's real, where they, it's where they live. <laughs> Woo, real. All right, Bolton, what else you got? And we got a Mick up in here. He's showing off some orange flower. That's what he's calling mm. it. Right wow, here. It looks that. tasty. Oh. He's also got some hash. Oh, there right. you go. Hmm. Nice. All right. Oh, I've noticed that that works better for me. Ash? That has Ash happened and been fine. I've never Love had hash. a bad trip, uh, but I don't feel like it's around very much. I don't know. Uh, not in this form. Europe. Yeah, Europe. Europe definitely. In Europe, definitely. Out yeah. here, it's more like what you see, you know, those little jars that we showed earlier. Yeah, and all I those didn't know what that was. Let's yeah, not that's... talk about hash out in Europe, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he got pinched for a whole lot of hash. Okay. All right. That's effed up, man. Yeah. <laughs> I heard I heard that story. I was I felt so I felt I tried to tell him. Right. Thank you. So, what you do you mean you tried to tell me? You were in on it, the caper. I said, take it to the back. He puts it in his back. Yeah, no, you did. You did. All right, next. <laughs> And uh, next up in here, we got J-Max. He's saying, hey, yo, it's Psycho Less. He's saying he killed it on the mix show last week. And he's yo, showing this off right looks, here. That looks. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Aprieta. Aprieta. <laughs> oh, wow. You were singing with it, huh? <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, <laughs> so. He's crooning. All right. Love it. I'm trying to hear what's on Oh, yeah. 
All right. That's that's the theme right there. Well, there you go. That's the new the new intro for the Dr. Greek the mix show. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Bring it. That's just dope. All right. That was dope. It. Next. We got Rachel saying she's outside hanging out with nature, hanging with the geese. The geese. The gaggle of geese. Gaggle. Look at that gaggle right there. They're gaggling, son. Hey, don't mess around with them geese, man. They ain't no joke. They'll chase you down. I'll Dude. kick it in the chest, son. Oh, no. What's wrong with you? <laughs> now all the geese people are going to so get cool. in touch with you. I used to, I used to feel Those are not Canadian geese. geese. No. Bring them some bread. They love bread. I wouldn't kick it. I'd, I wouldn't kick it in the chest. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, I say it. No, I'm not. I'll boot it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it like back. A Sparta I'll, ruffle, I'll ruffle the feathers on that. <laughs> hey, can, like Sparta? Can you eat geese? Yeah, right. You probably could. I want could, some geese yeah. for pets. A goose. You probably could. It's probably, what are the goose? I don't know what that. What I've had the goose jerky before. Oh, the goose really? is cooked. Yeah. Goose jerky? What? Damn. No. I don't think I would try goose jerky, yeah. man. I've had it. <laughs> that, of course you have. Supposed yeah. to have goose on Christmas, I think. It's like unlimited goose season in like the Midwest. Like people just kill tons of geese because there's so many of them. I ain't no geese. Turn it into ge- turn it into jerky. Barbecue oh. geese. The golden yeah. goose. I drink some wild turkey dough. That's some. <laughs> 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 All right. Fair well enough. Done. And then Pedro sent this in, B. You had something going on today? I don't remember. Oh, oh yes. I did a video with Mr. Criminal. Salute to D- Mr. Criminal. We got a new joint. Check it out. It's on uh, Apple Music. No, oh, man. And uh, his album is called God Got Me. And you can find the song We On. It's a good one. Trust. Oh, so we filmed it at his spot. So salute to my man, Mr. Criminal. All right. And that seems to be it. Word. Uh, thank you for the submissions. Keep them coming to be real TV contest at gmail.com and we will put them on. Um, we got a mix show after this show, Dr. Green Thumb Mix Show on Be Real TV Dr. Two. Green show. Uh <laughs> subscribe to <laughs> subscribe to Be Real TV Two to catch the mix. <laughs> or go to www.bereal.tv if you're a member and you can check it there. And if you're on Twitch watching us, just stay locked in and uh we will start after this show. All right. Um, now we're going to open up the doors to the Insane Asylum. That means y'all got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. We want to hear it. Welcome to the Insane Asylum. All right, let's do this. We got D. Sunzi up in here saying, uh, Be Real TV, I'd like to say to Melissa how much of a cool surprise it is to see you at the table. I've been a massive fan of your work for decades. I often mention you as being one of the best of your time. Keep on rocking. There we go. Oh, yeah. Thank Get you. a round yeah. for that. Yeah. Thank you. Surprised to be here myself. Pleasant. Oh, yeah. Salute to the coach who helped put this together. Uh, you know, Dan Mackay. Canadian. Canadian. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you know, our mutual, we, we know him. He works with us, you know, with Cyprus. He's a part of the squad. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know he's he used to work with me. Yeah, he's the bridge. Trust him. He's the bridge Excellent. that got Melissa here. The, 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 the bridge. Don't be scared. Immer right. Eats is saying Lollapalooza was probably the best jam I ever went to. Hey, I tell this story a, a couple of times because I was watching you guys play. Um, it was in Texas, I believe, and so, some some. Dickheads threw up like shotgun oh, yes. shells at Courtney that night in Texas. Yep, that was that was crazy. Yeah, they threw shotgun shells yep. up at at Courtney while they were playing their set. Damn. And this was like, oh good, yeah, dark days. It was a trip. Widow, Just, yeah. single mother, yeah. receiving shotgun shells on stage. Hey, but she handled it like a G. She mm-hmm. kept, you know, she kept going like a pro. Yeah, but they probably meant it as. Boom, 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 boom. Nah, some, nah. some some guys oh, some wow. some guys were trying to insult her and make her feel like oh, yeah? shit. Yeah, it was it was uh I don't know. It was not it was, to unfortunately. It was not to salute her. Yeah. Uh it was unfortunate. But you know what? She kept it moving. Yeah. Kept killing it and and doing what she was supposed to, even though it probably hurt like hell to deal with all that. Um yeah, that was that was I never forget that because that was like we we were all shocked. We all wanted to kind of jump in that crowd and 
beat those dudes up. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's <laughs> actually why I remember there being a feeling of protection. Like I feel it, maybe that's why I started feeling like these guys would have our back because we were not in very good shape and we were also yeah. not we were in an environment of like a hateful world that was blaming her for her Jesus, the best guy ever, Kurt, suicide. You know, like she yeah. gets left by her husband and people are blaming her somehow. And right. there's a lot of anger being put to her. She's like... And I remember feeling that you guys had our back on that tour because there was a lot of hate going around yeah. towards her. I always kept neutral Canadian, nice girl, but I didn't, you know, was definitely not in complete um, uh, golden light protection myself. And you were a gentleman. I always thought, you know what, these guys would take care of us. If yeah, something, for sure. If I mean, someone were to really cross the line, and that did, you know, that's a sense of the... Uh, the brotherhood, sisterhood I felt at that time that on that tour you represented for me. So thank you. Yeah, we would have beat the hell out of yeah. those dudes. <laughs> that that you know it would have been. We got a, would have got kicked off the tour for that sake for sure. I remember one night uh, Courtney made out with one of our roadies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember oh, that. Yeah. yeah, hey, we were doing the show somewhere. I can't remember where it was. It was after Texas. Um, but I looked to the side, and there goes Gator, and he's sitting next to Courtney. Oh, I vaguely remember Gator. He was a little oh. short dude. He was like, like our little... He, yeah, yeah, yeah. he thought he was security, but, you know, he's one of our roadies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I looked to the side, and there he is sitting next to Courtney. And then, you know... I refocus because that tripped me out. And then I looked back again just, you know, because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then they were making out right there in front of the crowd. I was like, Shnikes. Yeah, but when you're, cor when you're corny love, can you have what would be considered a normal Exactly. Romantic relationship. Yeah, you got to make out with Gator in public. Is what <laughs> you got to do. Yeah, 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 on stage. Like a just, exactly. I, yes, that's just, normal. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not sure I could, you know, I'm qualified to say what is specifically considered to be a normal relationship. Right. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like casual dating and just not not happening. Just casual, meet someone at a bar, make out I'm at just a bar, saying, not happening. For but her. Yeah. regardless <laughs> of anyone's opinions about her, right? She's yeah. an icon at this point in her life. That so matters. like at, at any man that would engage with her you know or woman or whatever mm -hmm. fill in her her fantasy blank you know what i mean we'll have to recognize her icon at some you point know, in the yeah. equation gator would have been her love toy if she had just <laughs> asked him wow. yeah, no doubt baby. that's what i'm saying though <laughs> i'm just saying mm -hmm. i'm just saying <laughs> all right next and we got Steady Rock. He's saying, what happened to people going to a show and just enjoying it? Everyone's more, concer more concerned about being on their phone and capturing a moment for social media. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody got an account. <laughs> they wanted yeah. to put some viral up. Dude, I, I was, to me, I, I was just talking about this the other day. Like, It's, it's a double-edged sword because now, before, you wish you would have maybe had a, a, a still shot from the show you were at. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man, I was there. And now you have that ability, but you also have the ability to like get footage and get in people's way if it's who else is just enjoying the show, you know. But like, it is weird, a spiritual conundrum, which is we're always living in the future versus right now, because that's always yeah. the I'm going to show it to somebody later, or yeah. they're going to see I was here. You're never only here yeah. now, which maybe weed could help with. Right. Maybe that's yeah. part of my hunt of what's the reason to do it. Yeah. But just be here, and yes, you want to capture it. It's fun, but. Then you're just leaving your moment if you do that. Yeah, often. you know what's amazing is though when you're in in the audience at a, at a at a concert or a show of any kind and people are got their phones up and they're recording it, is how easily you get sucked into watching the show That's on their phone yep. instead of it being right, <laughs> right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I'm looking at this tiny little screen like five feet away and the show is happening. Like all I got to do is look up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean I don't mind you tape a few seconds and just put it away but some people there watch the whole freaking show like oh yeah you know? oh, i'm yeah. glad i'm yeah. and that's the problem and that's the problem not there, for me man i love it it's <laughs> not just one song or a clip it's the whole damn set right and well like, at depeche mode they were like multiple facetime they were watching it with their friends on back home so it was like five people on a screen and the whole entire show was this person's phone 
watching it with oh, that's people cool. back home. I mean, it's kind of cool because they didn't have tickets for their friends, so it's a live stream. And that's like a fa- <laughs> and that's yeah. but that's a fantasy from the nineties though. Like yeah. you could have did oh, that true. way back then. Yeah, yeah. Be like that's, man, I wish I could. Play that's the cool to do that for your friend though. Like yeah. to yeah, like the, you're gonna exactly. get the whole damn thing. You're gonna play the the oh, whole yeah. concert. You are gonna have. <laughs> the phone up. Yeah, I, but I you're can, in the concert at the same time. Like, your screen is on mm-hmm. the big screen. Yeah. yeah. And, and I can kind of speak because a lot of times I'll go live on the Cypress Hill page um, from wherever we are uh, on tour in the world, and, and nobody appreciates that more than the fans that either right. can't be at those shows or just to get a glimpse of a, of a couple yeah. of songs live from yeah. Brazil or something. I mean, they, they the fans think it's dope. Uh, yeah, they do. I love it. Yeah, they do. I mean, they they, oh, they, so they definitely cool. do. But, like, w- you know, what you do, you don't give away the whole show. You right. give fragments, yeah, pieces. So it, it might lead someone to the show. But when you're giving the whole thing up, again, you know, like, bands spend a lot on production. Like, when Limp Biscuit was going out with that crazy ass, uh, what was mm-hmm. the robot thing, theme they were going with? With the flying saucer? No, no, it was before that. It was, uh, what's that character? It's, we grew up off this. Uh, Transformers? Um, no. No, it was before Transformers. Um, it was a show on on Channel 56. Um, Will Robinson? Was no, it was, it was based off of a Japanese um, cartoon. Um, Voltron? It wasn't Voltron, it was pre-Voltron. When I they had that big-ass giant toilet? It would shoot it would shoot Orc its Tour. fist out. Its its chest became a boomerang. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but you would remember it if you'd see it yeah. immediately. Yeah. But anyway, they they had like a stage like Voltron. Let's just say it's the closest comparison is Voltron. Mm-hmm. So they had that stage looking like that. Imagine how much that cost in production. Probably half a million dollars in production. Yeah. They had to to build two sets of that so that. Because their tour schedule was so heavy that they could not be late setting that up. So one one set had to be put up here and the other one sent to the next city and put up while this one's in use right now and just sort of leapfrog um, building those two stages. That cost a lot of money. And if somebody's there giving that away, it sort of takes the special thing away from the show and seeing that if this is your first time seeing that show someone gives it away you you kind of saw it but when you see the whole show i mean it kind of takes the luster away i think and i think that's why comedians do it and i know we're back on this and it's redundant but i mean (laughs) we're artists so we we have to talk about it so all right what else and midget mike saying melissa you should try microdosing with cannabis and train yourself to enjoy it (laughs) You Thank could. You. Okay, I'll you take could. that advice. Microdose. There are, they, okay. they do make gummies with THC microdose level, like 10 so just milligrams. just to get it to be a base comfort, and then you can utilize it for the magic. Okay. Melissa, yeah, they, you, yeah, they start them at 10 milligrams and up. Mm-hmm. Even five. So Even five, yeah. yeah. My well, question, <laughs> Melissa, was do you get the munchies when you smoke? Does that happen Oh, to I you? definitely, yes. I mean, it's like a... It's, I, I, Drink, smoke, eat. So I want cigarettes. I want booze. I want anything to just erase it. It just, it all. Awesome. it just feels weird. Take it all in. <laughs> and then we got a fifth corner record saying contact high would probably work for Melissa. If it's Put working right now. I'm doing it. You are feeling contact high? A little drip. Well, I mean, I perhaps, but maybe it's this. But it's maybe it's that. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't tell when you've taken. An infused drink if yeah. it's contact or no, and I'm generally open minded, tough enough to handle all of this. This yeah. is not a problem. But the question is, will I leave here with the urge to microdose so that I can get really high and have a good day one day? Microdose yeah. is not going to get you really high, though. No, but I'll microdose so I can get to the place that yeah. I do a, a shit ton and I've little steps. Yes, I'm open to it. It sounds fun. I do think there's benefits. <clears throat> I definitely believe. In there's there's a reason for this incredible movement and Dr. Green Thumb. We it have this thing, we have this device over here on the end of the table. It's the Tower of Terror. <laughs> what is this incredible thing? Tower. This is uh it's it's a dab rig, but you know, with an electronic oh, um that's what these dabs piece so that about? you could do your concentrates in here and you flip it. It's a gravity bong. Um or gravity pipe or whatever you want okay. to call it. In each flip. The smoke accumulates um, up here, and then it gets pushed throughout here. And Let me ask you something. Would, would that be like like hitting a volcano almost? 
no, because the volcanoes flower and this is concentrate. But I mean, this it's has the water same too. theory. Yeah, and this has water. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, they'll both get you there. And our friend Kelly Blaze has flipped that thing 205 times in a row. Yeah. To the head, to the head. one sitting, yeah. yeah. Sure did. That was overdoing it. Yeah. But salute. <laughs> All right. Pure, pure extreme. Very extreme. <laughs> Over the line. We got heavy hitters. He's saying, uh, be real. I think the show you guys were talking about was Star Avengers. Star Avengers. There you go. Star yep. Avengers. That's what it was. Yep. That's exactly what it was. They must have been Star um, Avengers fans, I guess, right? To do yeah. this concert this week. Well, you know, there, there was a. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those things are like are collectibles. Like yeah. A lot of people collect those particular characters because they go way back. Probably my Japanese people in the fan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm on. We, we, got, we got Mr. Kells World Hi. asking, uh, Melissa, I was going to ask if you played any other instruments. Every bass player I know can play a bunch of instruments. Uh, I can play guitar. Uh, so I actually am writing my own songs. I actually write on guitar. And then I find my place on the bass with it but i write mostly on like rock guitar and then a little bit of piano single finger i can add layers on records where i have lots of and then i'd say my my finest tool is my harmonizing making voice so i'm known as choir train girl and that's what my role and hole was it'd be like put five part harmonies to any one courtney so voice so ear for harmonies would be the best tool i have <laughs> the voice is the instrument yeah. so Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We got Utah Hockey saying Trace, your IG is awesome. Thank you so much for showing Cyprus. No worries. No worries. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot of fun doing that. And then Dan's asking, yo, Trace, how was the race? Oh, man, the race this week out in uh, Las Vegas was unbelievable. Um, great times. Big shout out to Las Vegas Ferrari for hooking your boy up. But no, it was <clears throat> it was amazing. Like to see, I mean, it's such an international world stage. I mean, uh, there wasn't a celebrity that wasn't there. Um, and I was talking to B about it earlier, like when Rihanna walked in, oh man, that, I mean, the place went crazy. It was, you know, it, 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 it was a wild time, but no, I had a lot of fun out there. You went crazy too, right? I did. No, for sure. So I'm, I'm like a little yeah, kid out baby. there with those cars. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Ferrari boys. That's let's right. Go. That's right. No, he, he meant you went crazy for Rihanna. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> be trying to front. She was out there with ASAP Rocky. So lost I, it, you know, I, I, I couldn't I put, hear you, you know, I, my usual charm on. Your heart's broken. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I Are you off. excited for the Ferrari movie, though? The Michael Mann Ferrari movie? I cannot wait for that movie coming out. That Michael Mann is all you had to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? He did heat. Is that? Yeah. 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 Would you believe I'm having Thanksgiving dinner with Michael Mann? That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, you Michael tell Mann. him we cool. love him. I'm here yeah. in LA. Michael, that's how I got to the show. Michael Mann is, that's my that's my jams. That's Miami Vice, baby. Yeah. yeah. That's, but heat is, yeah. Vegas, heat is his masterpiece. All that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, every it's all. He's got a lot of great work out there. And there he is making Ferrari, which I think is going to be as good. You know, to sustain a career of that level of the yeah. the, I, I mean, I hear is you know very demanding. It's a trick. Like you're still calling it and bringing it at that level is yeah. very impressive. Bring bring him some joints or something. I mean, maybe I'll take these. <laughs> yeah. Bring it. Yeah. Yep. He's got a lovely family. Absolutely. Friends with his daughters. He's got like a band of wonderful man daughters who are my friends, and they are power women, and they love their father. And we're That's awesome. For dinner. Uh, <laughs> hell, yeah. hell yeah. You take them and see if you... <laughs> yeah. I will. The little dessert, you know, <laughs> after, after the turkey. Yep. Makes that hard-hitting piano music. Yeah. All right. And, and we got sense. Midget Mike. He's asking, uh, Mel, name a rocker who gets no airtime in your car. A rocker? Well... Just change that Limp station. Limp Biscuit is not getting any time in my car. The, hey, that's an honest. That's the second yeah. honest answer we've ever got. Everybody tries to avoid answering. Oh everybody yeah. Everybody tries to be no, diplomatic, I... but that was great. That was awesome. Well done. What do you hear when you hear them? Like you just like swack. I get a little mad about what happened at the late nineties. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little confused about what happened to the boys in the band. Yeah. Yeah. Word up. I also don't like, I don't mean I don't mind fusion of things, but I do think it gets weird when it's like, I didn't buy it, the depth of it, and like having lots of parts together that don't the fit together. For the Nuki. Well, and the lyrics. The Nuki. Yeah, that song was kind <laughs> of, I don't know. See, that uh, song, you know, it's. Some it, rules. It, they have better. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the Nuki, nah. That's a hit. Dude.
they had a couple hits, you know, but they're not for everybody. There's not, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Indeed. Break some stuff tonight. Give me something to break. Okay, we've had our moment of biscuit. All right, <laughs> and we got Mars Vader saying, yo, be real. Just want to say thank you for the album, The Prescription. It helped me get through med school. Did it now. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, thank you. I'm glad you got inspired by it. Um, yeah, man. Fellow doctor. Fellow doctor. Fellow doctor, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, thank you very much, man. I'm Come glad. I'm a long line of learned professional doctors. Exactly. And I'm glad it connected with you, man. Salute. And Kappa saying Cypress and other hip hop acts coming together in the 90s with metal acts was great. I still got the old albums with Hill, Cube, and Corn. Yeah, Judgment okay. Night was one of those albums. Oh, right. I forgot yeah. about that. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Just another victim. It was really dope. And it showed that you could bridge hip hop artists with, you know, with rock or alternative. And we or will punk. never forget Run DMC, the Beastie Boys. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Just, I mean, yeah. that yeah. was. <clears throat> That was a good era. Run DMC you know, was rap. the first song, uh, first group to cover a rock song yeah, and get it. a hit oh, right. with it. Yeah. Aerosmith. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they didn't really change it. True. All the lyrics they said, they just say it was the cadence that they and they were just treating well, it more well, like even a rap the song. cadence was pretty the, much the same. They just you know put a little bit of Run DMC flavor on it, yeah. <laughs> but the, the cadence was pretty much the same. I think I think it just didn't. The melody was not the same because these guys were rapping it, not yeah. necessarily Three young singing. Ladies. I was gonna say I, I think the video is what made that song. Oh yeah, that video when yeah. it bust the wall down and oh yeah, that was dope. That's it real. brought Aerosmith back too, because yeah. they like they were like pissed off at each other. They weren't like communicating. It was on like a, one of those downward moments for them. Cocaine. He got his groove drug. back. Part, yes, cocaine yeah. is a hell of a drug. They got their groove back after that. Yep. Became Aerosmith. I think it was like two or three years later. It was like, dude looks like a lady. Yeah. And then MTV got behind him. Loving an elevator. They had a plethora of hits. Man. All their videos are iconic. Uh, yeah. 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 Utah Hawk is saying 80s Depeche Mode was the best. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That was that was great Depeche Mode too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Blasphemous rumors. Mm. People Ooh. are people. Flax celebration. Oh man. Stripped. Classic. Oh, all of Stripped. it's good. All of these. Stripped. Very good. Yeah. Outstanding. B- Violators '88, right? Yeah, actually, that was the the '90s. '90s. That was exact 90, right? moment of right. the crossover. Both sides are good, but that's a pinnacle. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That's like 92 or 91? 91, I think. Yeah. Right. It's like never mind your, which is why it got all sort of lost in the future. Yep. Oh my God. Policy of truth. Oh. Ooh, oh God. The policy so. of no, and consistent in their theme, like this romantic doom. The best. Gorgeous. It's the yeah. best. It's in, 100. Yeah. It's, would you consider that the first emo or what? Like, hmm. They're, they're mu- but as a musician, the intervals that they put together, you know what I mean? The way they impact, and you're just like, oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get you. Me. You got me. Yeah. Primary emo. Yeah. They- yeah, well, the Smiths, The Cure, and Depeche Mode. I mean, yeah. the, the UK melancholic emo is what saved my ass as a tiny teen in, my, in the 80s. So yeah. those guys were my heroes. That's yeah. how I knew that people with really dark thoughts and hopeful dreams could be okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's okay to be different. Yeah. yeah. It was great. Yeah. Off the cure. And we got Mario up in here saying, Melissa, what a surprise. Love you. And he's saying, whole forever. Oh, whole forever. Yeah. Forever. Forever infinity. Where are they now? Yeah. Y'all should be playing some gigs every now and then, man. I agree. I mean, I don't. I always said no for 25 years, but there's something about right now. Even when I saw the pumpkins and like the no girl bass players, there's moments now where I'm getting a little. Someone like, will bring it up itchy. and it will happen. Yeah. I mean, well, we're putting it in the air right now. Are you guys speaking? Are you talking? I speak to everybody because I am peacekeeper Canadian, but it's not. Not everybody speaks not, with yeah. everybody. Exactly. Uh, that could, you know, like you just keep on the peacekeeping ways, and mm-hmm. you'll you'll like unlock the doors and reconnect the bridge, and it'll happen. We got an American saying it's called <laughs> "fuck them." <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. too. Yeah, that too. There's always that option. Too. 
Yeah, that <laughs> tour you guys did with Manson. Yeah. I saw that tour. Oh, excellent. That was a ill-fitted, weird tour, although... You guys rocked. Yeah, we were the best we could be at that moment. Yeah, it was very good. Because I saw I saw you guys come on stage and like totally rip it, and then that it was that show that like uh, he broke his ankle. Yeah, he fell on his face, and then they yeah, they dragged him out, and yeah. then they just yep. <laughs> yeah. and the tour was canceled. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah. Dude, I, but to witness something like that, you guys have he a broke show. He broke his ankle on stage. Yeah, he kind of. I think he tripped Ow. over a cord. Oh, still, sorry, I don't know. Yeah, yeah and then he just fell, Stops. bow, and yeah. then he just was lifeless, and they just dragged him off, and the band finished the, the song. Yeah. Ended the tour right there. Yeah, they ended the tour because he wasn't yeah. coming back. Sounds like the guy at the Laker game the other night. <laughs> 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 Twisted his ankle and then buckled his knee. He was all sorts of problems. That would that that, that it would suck to have that happen on stage. Imagine how many people that's happened to trying to oh. get to buck on stage you know yeah because you know you got to pour it on sometimes it's you know like you're feeling the music and you do this crazy ass move and boom are you my f- yeah yeah watch out now all right what else you got and we got sega sonic blue saying happy turkey day to the table youtube and twitch chat amazing guest today salute Hell yeah. oh, squeeze salute. out to thanksgiving gobble gobble and eighty one X is saying, I thought the worst song was I'm walking on sunshine, but I heard it yesterday and it wasn't so bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, see, you're getting older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That song and Tracy Chapman. I'm changing the yeah. station immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you still got, got it. Fast carb switch. The switch. <laughs> that's a hey, Steph, that's one of the songs I used to hate. For sure. oh, yeah. I definitely didn't wasn't yeah. feeling that one. Salute to her. <laughs> There. I could, I I could, could kind of dig it I now. Back that, in the day, I could not. I named that song in three notes or less. <laughs> Was that? I'll tell you what. Nice and smooth. Yeah, nice and smooth did it. Did some things with yeah, it. They made me it. like it. Yep. <laughs> sometimes I rhyme slow. Sometimes I rhyme quick. Yeah, that's. I don't mind like that. that so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> And he be GB saying, saying heat two only in books. Get that audio book. It hit it hits hard. That's what he's saying. Heat two. Heat two heat is two. a book. Yes, my husband is reading it right now in preparation for a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh boy, nice. <laughs> and she's going. He's That's going to cool. ask him about it, huh? Yeah, he's a filmmaker, and Heat is his number one, and Michael Mann's his number one hero. Nice. In terms of That's cool. Shops. <laughs> Yeah, I always up. wondered about Michael Mann, like his criminal mind and how it worked, because that's all he ever wrote about was like crime. Mm-hmm. Even the early TV series were always, you know, this subculture criminal, like with Miami Vice, it was the cocaine cowboys, um, Vegas. Uh, you know, it was always this. That's kind the of, fast lane, baby. Yeah, and I always wondered, mm-hmm. like, what was his connection to that, and like how he he really tapped that well. Cocaine. Okay. Probably on the movies he grew up to, you know, like. Born All the Dillinger Chicago, flicks. I think he might. I think he was. I, I can't speak to it, but if for some reason, knowing he's from Chicago, I always thought I knew a thing or two about the real world of crime, but I don't know. Thanks. Well, you. well, you know, you grow up in Chicago. There's, you know, all kinds of figures that you grew up like watching those movies, like about Dillinger, about right. Capone, about um, exactly. Babyface Nelson, and the rest of those guys at that time. So that could have yep. been what was the inspiration for the movies. He's he writes today. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's I a think, question for dinner. Yeah, I, I think I think Michael Mann is the sound of Miami. Like when I think of Miami because mm-hmm. of Miami Vice and all that, I'm like, as soon as I roll up into that state and I'm down there, I'm just that's uh, the music I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm hearing drums. You just played that the other day in the you know, uh, yeah. yeah you I'll t- play it again. <laughs> Michael Mann. <laughs> Michael Mann that's is Jan Hammer. Yeah. Michael Mann is the man. All right, what else you got? And Utah's uh, asking, yo, Steph, are you using the classic volcano? I am indeed. It is great. It's classic. Classico. It's a classic. We got Midget Mike asking, Mel, any wild <laughs> stories making out of our minds? Oh, sweet. That was my most psychedelic album. But you know what you're talking about, keeping, uh, not relying on drugs for the creativity? Right. And I'm writing my memoir right now and realizing that it's actually a very pure and important fact that I've never performed, played under any influence of anything. Boo! We yeah, thank you. Oh, <laughs> but, but I've, in between, I've done a lot, and I feel like I take from it yeah. into it. But um, come on, out of our minds was my last solo record, and actually the highlight was making the music video where we had a 
bleeding forest and I ripped a Viking's heart out with my bare hands. That was a highlight of my, um, wow. out of our minds, the, 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 the theme of the record was travel out of our minds into our hearts standing by. Our hearts have been standing by for so long. And it was this psychedelic concept album of just the connectivity through heart, blood, and forgetting the mind and transcending it. And then for some reason, the, our, our, the Viking represented the man system that the witch had to <laughs> rip out and eat his heart. <laughs> Truly. Wow. <laughs> um, when you play with Hole next, and it's <laughs> going to happen, you're going to do some mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, right. So you could, do, you know, that's checklist. Right. Maybe I'll become a weed smoker by then, and it will work well on stage. It could happen. It it well, we yeah. will. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, maybe not no. after the show. You won't even yeah, feel the weed if you're on mushrooms. That's why I say, as well, we've, as we've learned, don't even waste your weed if you're on the mushrooms because yeah. you won't yeah. even recognize it. Yeah. If you want to just smoke to taste it, that's yeah. cool, but you're not going to feel it. Right. All right, Bolton, what else you got? And we got a hybrid cypher saying, nice and smooth, man. What a group. Peace and love you guys. Yeah. Uh -huh. Greg Nice. Greg Nice. Smooth Even though I diss Limp Biscuit. Say what? Uh, even though I diss Limp Biscuit, that's okay, right? All of a sudden, when I said you, when you said not a lot of people answer that question, it made me realize, are people more peace, love than I? Like, rock people are were born to have opinions <laughs> you know, I, about I, rock. I know what it is. Most yeah. hip hop artists will not answer the question because they, they feel yeah, like they're going to run into respectful. each other. They don't want to yeah. hurt okay. nobody's <laughs> feelings. They don't either want to don't either want don't want to hurt their feelings or they don't want to run into that person and be like, hey, why'd you say that? Okay. <laughs> I heard what you said hey. on the Dr. Green Thumb show. I heard that. <laughs> that's, right. that's me you was talking about. But, uh, but you know, someone, <laughs> they got asked that question because this, this particular um, fan that asked this question, he asked that of everybody. Okay. And everybody normally dodges. Hmm. But this one artist came in here and said, oh yeah, it's 6ix9ine, Takashi 6ix9ine. He ain't got no play. <laughs> And we're like, all right, yeah. yeah. He answered honestly, and, quick. You know, you answered honestly. You don't yeah. got to feel no way about that. No, okay. not at all. Yeah. yeah. All right. In fact, I'm sure that's that's just off top. Give it a second. Yeah. You, you'll you'd be amazed <laughs> how many way. other pop right up. You're like, oh hell no, no, I'd never hear that yeah. one again. Either. Yeah. If I could think of more, I would. All right. Yeah. <laughs> No, last one so far. We got Mark up in here Burning saying, "Yo, B, I smoked house. a blunt with you in Montreal back in the day." Ooh. Say that again. Mark saying, I smoked a blunt with B-Real in Montreal back in the day. Oh, what? right on, man. You must have had a bad day then if you're smoking that blunt. B. It must have been some years back because mm -hmm. I stopped smoking blunts a long time ago. Probably 96. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's totally possible. And the last one so far, we got Adrian saying, Beastie Boys mosh pit when Sabotage would hit, those speakers were nuts. Oh, yeah. Almost scary and not a cell phone in sight. Fans living in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, Beastie <laughs> mosh pits were crazy, too. Very cool. Yeah, man. Salute to the Beasties, uh, you know, and rest in peace, MCA. Yeah. And uh, we want to thank you for your interactions, submissions, time, love, and support. We soak it all in mm. and send it right back to you. And we want to thank Melissa for sitting down. First of many times, she's going to be back here again. Please. The education, the, the education. The education. Yes. The education of Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> have to teach her about some weed. Bring it. Um, thank you. We thank you and, and congratulations and salute to everything you've been doing in and out of music. Thank you. I, it's a privilege to be here. It gave me a good reason to come to California. Right on. Yeah. Uh, you got any shout outs you want to give? My daughter, River? No. Do I have to give shout outs? Is it people that I know? Well, don't whoever know? you like. I love my daughter, River. She's my number one thought right now. Right on. Right Salute on. to River. Yeah. C minus. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you a shout out Aww. because. Uh, like uh, when I saw you with the Pumpkins, that was my favorite era of. I mean, I went and saw a lot of shows that you guys played together, and it was like mm. super rad to watch. And just highlight the, of my bass playing existence was the, that tour and that uh, moment in that band. Yeah, you guys were was some. It was some of the heaviest playing I've Very ever heard. Very heavy you, and three to four hours a night of shows, opening for ourselves because that was the mood Billy was in. So it was you know different keys every night of like just different set list every day we were at our musical 
up, I'd say. It was one of the best things I've ever witnessed. I mean, I would come off tour of my, when I was on with Corn just to go see you guys and hang out and be like, oh, my God, and come back off. You know, it was stoked. So I just want to shout you out. Thank you so much. It's, Thank it, you. It's been an awesome pleasure having you here on the show. And a uh, shout-out to my mom, my son, everyone. Have everyone have a great uh, holiday week. Uh, C-4 on all social medias, and I'll see you guys soon. Cycle easy. Yep. Shout out everybody on the chat, checking us out, hanging out with us. Shout out everyone here at the table, of course. Um, if you're on the IG, go to Psycho Less Official. And if you're checking for the website, go to the psycholessshop.com. It's Tuesday. You know how we getting down. Cheers. Mix right after this. Don't go nowhere. Squeeze. Just got a new one in. We got Irie Curl saying, B, the women on the show are dope. Bring back Melissa. Absolutely. And Hell shout yeah. the Insane Asylum. Thank you guys so much. Shout to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout to the Dominator. What's up, Trace? Oh, Melissa, big shout out today. It's, it's an amazing story. Your accomplishments, uh, which are sometimes you know, it's the boys' club. So it's amazing to see what you have done. Um, uh, you're definitely uh, an icon in, in the music industry. So it was great being able to hang out with you today. All the guys around the table hanging out with you every Tuesday. Thank you very much. All the guys up here in the treehouse. Everybody down in the front office here at Be Real TV Studios. Um, everybody hanging out uh, on my Instagram, at Trace Nunes, if you'd like to give me a follow. It's a lot of the behind-the-scenes Cypress Hill, behind-the-scenes down here. It's kind of what I like to give, the fly-on-the-wall perspective. Um, and other than that, Steph Tone, what's up, brother? Mm -hmm. uh, Shout-out Mark Sargent, Karen B., David Weiss, Melissa. It's very nice to meet you and hang. Mm -hmm. um, you're a party animal for sure. And uh, that's why they all love you. They can see it. They know it. They know they're kind. Uh, B, C minus, Psycho Less, Bolton, Ray Ray and Morning Shot Films, uh, Taryn at Velvet Hammer, The Dominator. Thanks for uh, dialing up my studio. I'm loving it. Um, A Tom, Pedro, Javi Lopez, E Zone, Cali Blaze, The Asylum, Twitch War, The Discordies. Y'all have a great week. See y'all again on Friday. Happy Thanksgiving and uh, have a good one. You probably haven't done this in a while, but um, when you get home, go into your house, roll to the first mirror that you see, look deep into your own eyes and say, I love you. Mm. Swallow that.